All right. Good day, everybody, and welcome to the stream. We're back playing Warptorio, the intended way, where we defend the above-ground platform. And it kind of reminds me I should have... I intended to get a mod to uh, delete the amount of corpses laying on the ground a bit faster. I think in Vanilla Factorio they stay like at least 15, maybe 30 minutes, I don't know, but for a long time. So that means we probably have uh, the FPS is already dropping. Uh, I think we can... Let's see, we should get a sprite count here somewhere. Yeah, there's like 60,000 sprites on the screen or something. So if we zo zoom all the way in, we go back to 4,000. If we go to the map view, 100 sprites, we're back to 60 FPS. But the sprite count, when I look at this, it's up to 60,000, that means... <laughs> yeah, that means FPS is dropping. But if these corpses would despawn faster, that would probably solve it. I'll try to get that done for next stream. Today we won't be spending too much time um, above ground, because we were in the process of designing the actual base. We have been running on a temporary base for a long time. Uh, UPS is still alright, uh, thanks to the amazing Factorio devs who made this game more optimized than <laughs> any other game I can think of by at least a full order of magnitude. It is insane how optimized this game is. It's almost as if they were Factorio addicts, that's how optimized their game is. They really have optimized the game of the game code of Factorio as the players are trying to optimize their factories. So <laughs> I guess it's the uh, the right dev team for the right game to actually optimize the game so well. Right. Yeah, we ran off uh, red and green signs. Most of the red and green signs, actually all of it is done, except uh, these two technologies, which we don't, are not getting now. And we have finally transitioned to building a real base after we fully upgraded the size of these floors as far as they would go with just red and green signs. We, the main thing we got is these huge hallways. Uh, so we have a lot of space to build in. We also got this war beacon, which currently covers most of the factory. And very soon will expand by 8 tiles to cover all of the factory. Which is why we are building exactly inside this square by now. Because this beacon transmits whatever you put inside it with 100% efficiency to everything around it. So our labs have productivity bonus right now. Let's just research something. So you can see there's a bonus bar here in the bottom, which slowly goes up. Uh, red science has productivity bonus, green science has productivity bonus, military science has productivity bonus. Only the things that cannot get productivity bonus, like grenades and ammo, they don't have it. But the rest all has it. It of course comes with a quite a power cost, so we'll see how long we can run that. I intended to get to Blue Science last warp zone, but it was just a little bit too much to figure out, as you can imagine, you cannot just build something and then spaghetti the rest around it, because there is no around it. This, this, we cannot use extra space, we have to plan stuff out a little bit better than in Vanilla Factorio, where you could just like belt around it like so. You have infinite space, so you can basically connect everything together if you don't make too big of a mess. But here we can, so the design process is taking uh, a little bit more time. So let's see where we left off last time. I'm gonna load the save again to get a proper uh, gauge of how the factory is doing. We do have uh, stone on this side and coal on this side, which we are mining with that uh, warp teleporter thing. So we can mine stone and coal here, and then that warps back to the factory through these uh, belts. 
let me get out of the way there. <laughs> so that is our coal and stone supply. We currently have uh, about 8k stone and no coal here. What do we have in the here? We have no oil in here, but we have oil actually in the basement over here. So this basically can be deconstructed. We have about 40k iron, 30k copper. I'm still going to be want to I'm still going to want to mine iron as much as I can. Perhaps even double iron, because during the design process we are only spending iron on ammo. We do have like an automated warning setup. So we have 3.8k ammo and 4k iron to make more ammo. As that iron drops below 4k, we're gonna get a notification that we need to do something about it. So it's fairly safe, even though it's hand fed, it is fairly safe. Our gun turrets are amazingly strong. 21 damage, so we can survive big biters, but it's too costly. It costs basically too much ammo to kill everything Warptorio throws at you. And at some point it becomes economically not viable to stay. You are spending uh, way more iron than you can mine per second. So we are going to warp out before big biters arrive at 50% devolution. Um, yeah, the first thing we're going to do is uh, try to get blue signs developed. That requires a couple steps like red chips, we need oil, we need plastics, sulfur, engines. Yeah, there's a, a big step uh, still. It's, I think the setup for blue signs alone is going to be bigger than everything which has been built in here so far. And we still somehow got a reserve space for yellow and purple signs and eventually space signs, I guess. Alright, so we got a good deal of iron. But yeah, we're spending iron, so we still want more steel. We can we can never have too much steel. We have about actually 5k steel, so that is good. Oil, 1.3 million, so we're good on oil for a while. And water, these tanks are mostly full. Soon we will get water on the boiler floor. We can just place offshore pumps here. Then we can get rid of all of this. And we can just connect the water supply like outside basically. So that's gonna save up a whole bunch of space. Oh, we do have a whole bunch of coal down here. 80k, so we probably should bring a little bit of coal up to this floor. So grenades keeps going. Coal is transported automatically through here. We have the belt set up to prioritize going straight. Overflow goes in the chest. And only if the overflow is needed, it is uh, used up as well. So we have both of these chests for coal. This one is for the uh, this base section for grenades at this moment. Later for plastics as well, somewhere over there. And the rest goes down to the basement. Eventually we won't need coal in the basement anymore, I hope. The long term plan is to get rid of all this. Not the oil tanks, perhaps, but get rid of all this and switch to nuclear power. Uh, that means nuclear power won't uh, require coal. These furnaces require coal, but if we manage to switch over to electric smelting, which is going to be another huge coal save, then we can get away with uh, not having coal on this floor at all, and this belt can later on just be used for something else. Then. Coal is going to be mined above ground, stored here, and it is only going to be used for grenades and plastics. And it is not a problem if we run out of coal, like it is now, because if we now run out of coal, the entire factory basically stops. We cannot smelt, we cannot produce power. That is uh, approximately where we are at. Okay. So I guess that concludes the catching up and the introduction with whatever the heck we were doing here. We are, I saw we are not mining on this world. It looks like I just chose to design, uh, not place my miners, not explore out to find a safe spot. I think in the next warp zone, I think in the next warp zone I do want to be mining iron again. Uh, steel has stopped smelting, we can put four chests of iron in here again. So we have a lot of space to mine either 
double iron or just iron and copper to prepare for red chips and stuff. Because this copper is slowly going to dwindle. Yeah, I think I should be mining at all times really. Because we it's gonna take a while before we have more than two belts of uh, of stuff incoming. We don't really have the space to smelt more than a yellow belt of or just yet. We could smelt in the basement after we get boiler floor water that would free up one of these angles. But as soon as we unlock blue signs, there are another bunch of floor upgrades uh, waiting to be researched. So I guess we want to get those first before we put additional stuff in the basement. The plan is basically not to redesign the entire thing with every size floor size upgrade we get, but just to get a, a bunch at the same time and then do it once properly instead of keeping constructing and deconstructing stuff. So hopefully this is going to stay until the late game. All the way to rocket punches and stuff. Right. <coughs> Why are you upgrade? Okay, I'll rechat for a bit before I start to play. Actually, you seem to disconnect the water. Yeah, I'm just catching up. I will reload the save before actual actually starting to play again. Look at that buffer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I, I tend to gravitate, I don't know if it's normal to play like this, but I tend to gravitate towards making huge buffers in Warptorio, just to keep um, to keep everything going uninterrupted while we warp from planet to planet. I may have a little too big buffers, but it also it is nice to have too big buffers, because that means you can basically mine coal on one planet for all that planet, just you build it once, at the end you deconstruct it once, and then you have enough coal in your buffer for like uh, four or five warp zones before you need to do it again. Why am I upgrading the corner outpost? Because it's the only thing I can research at the moment, realistically. We are going to want these eventually to upgrade the bridge size. Um, If I can find it. There's another research which upgrades the width of these hallways. Uh, and these four corner technologies are a prerequisite for that. So we are going to want them eventually anyway. So since we don't have blue signs set up and we research everything red green that we want to have uh, early on, there is just nothing else to do at the moment. All right. Then we are ready to actually get into the game. I guess most people who were waiting for the stream to start have meanwhile joined. Hello everybody, welcome. All 71 of you at the moment. <sighs> my coffee is ready. My game is ready. My body is ready. <laughs> Let's play Warptorio. Alright, so momentarily we are still at only medium biters, so I guess the magazine consumption is not that hefty just yet. Using about 60 magazines a minute, that's 240 iron a minute, so that's about a quarter, a quarter-ish belt of iron. If you look at the spikes on the last warp zones, the blue spikes are the ammo usages near the end of the warp zone. You can really see when big biters start to come in, it just spikes up like instantly. So that's why we are warping out before 50% evolution, if we remember to do so. On this planet we don't have anything to retract, so that is good. Let's, uh, I guess, let's continue the design process, because that's gonna be our next bottleneck, is actually building blue signs, so we can do something with the base. Alright, so... How did I plan that again? The war beacon extends to here, to this assembler currently. But after the next upgrade, which is only a blue science technology away, we're going to get the war beacon to extend all the way to this assembler and all the way to this lab. 
and disassembler and disassembler, I imagine. See, perhaps I misplaced this over here. There's two tiles from the edge, so... Yeah, let's properly align that before I build it in the wrong location accidentally. I don't know where to start, man. I guess let's start with the most distant thing in this corner, maybe oil processing. I think it makes sense to start from the far away corner. Alright, I made six refineries apparently. Okay, so let's just plop down one. We're gonna have, in the end, we're gonna have two inputs, one for oil, one for water. We're gonna have three outputs. Let's use ghost basements. So that is gonna be the standard the standard design kind of fits in here with one tile to spare. And later we'll get even more space, so I think we're gonna be good with that. Then let's place this far to this side as it will go. But we need to take into account that this will expand later on. Uh, there's gonna be two belts here. Maybe even a third pipe, but at least two belts I know for sure. Maybe two pipes as well, so I guess this is the proper alignment once these pipes pop out to here. And the extra belt spawns in, like so. We still have space to connect these pipes, just not really, but we can rotate these, so... I think this is gonna be a decent alignment. Let's use uh, normal power lines instead of cheaping out on wooden power poles all the time. Right, so how many of these things can we get in here? So one, two, three, four, five, six. I made six. I don't know. I don't remember if I made six because I was planning to build six, or at least six. I think we can fit more in here. Seven for sure. Eight probably as well, because here's gonna be red chips anyway. This area is reserved for oil cracking once we have advanced oil. Start from blue signs and work backwards. Yeah, maybe. But there's just... The, I mean, we built like dedicated builds for this, but stuff like oil, red chips, green chips, engines, sulfur, all of that is uh, like multi-use, so we need to make sure we can get that out in different directions as well for later on. Alright. So I guess let's start aligning red chips. As far away as it will go. So that is one, two, three, four, five. This is six. Normally you need like one copper wire assembler to feed six red chips. So this would look kind of normal. But we have this war beacon with productivity modules. So later on, when the productivity bonus is high, we're going to be able to supply much more than... Uh, six assemblers per copper wire assembler. So I think we can maybe get eight of these at least. Perhaps even more. Yeah, normally you want like tons of red chips. In a normal playthrough I would build at least like 48 of these. But there's simply no space for that kind of production. The war beacon is going to compensate for that a bit though. I think we're just going to start out with this and we'll see later if that's enough. We are going to need three belts down the middle. So it's going to have to move out a bit more. Okay, so we have three ingredients coming in. We can combine plastic and electronic circuits on one belt and have copper cable on another belt. And then we have another belt to lead out the red chips. In the middle, probably. And is, that is going to have to go towards blue signs over here. That means we can have like pipes of oil and water coming down here next to the build to connect to the oil refinery. So that's good. That uses up this entire hallway already though.
the music is weird when you move or zoom. Ammo low. Oh yeah, good, uh, good call. Iron for ammo is running low. See the map for more details. Alright, let's see. 3.6k ammo. Yeah, let's, uh, let's bring some iron over. We also should bring that coal over to keep making grenades. I forgot about that. I specifically prepared uh, the stream before and uh, told myself I was going to do that just before we loaded the actual save. And now I end up doing stuff like this. Alright, so that is two chests full of that. While we have the coal on us, let's just refill these furnaces for the next warp zone as well. Alright, these gun turrets are out as well. Just gonna do a cheap solution for now. Oh, these are full. These are full as well. Okay, you are better prepared than I thought. Alright, and iron for ammo. Alright, all the ammo samplers can run again. 37% evolution already, we're halfway towards big biters from the moment we loaded the safe. <laughs> That's going quite fast. Alright, so red chips here. Perhaps we can then build green chips for red chips, like so. Except, of course, um, yeah, good question. Maybe like so. Let's copy this so we can change the recipe. That way we could have we could have like copper coming in on a belt over here. Like so. And just use long handed to put that in the green science assemblers. That would kinda work. If I can power all of that. We can have iron coming or an output of yeah, I think iron coming in like so. And then output green chips on this belt. That could work. I guess. I guess we're gonna do it on both sides. It looks stupid because it's only four assemblers, but later with the war beacon we may need that kind of stuff. Actually, that's a good point with the productivity bonus. We may be able to get away with more, but I guess that's a pretty easy change. We could do something like this instead. We could do something like this instead. Hmm. Alright, let's, uh, let's not go into details too much yet. Let's first do the general layout. So this is 16 red chips assemblers. I guess uh, what next then? We need copper wire for red chips as well. So how is this gonna go? Uh, we need a copper belt incoming. So we need to split this off once more.
I'm guessing we're gonna have like two copper belts coming up near the end. Like one iron, one steel and two copper, something like that. Ah, I guess we can redesign the details later. Let's for now just split of copper. We also need to lead iron over here somehow. Oh, I have uh, some red belts as well. Definitely need a red splitter for copper as well. Red splitters we don't have, alright. Because this is gonna go towards low density structures in the end. We're gonna go for red chips, green chips. This is gonna be a red belt for sure. I think we keep the uh, iron belt yellow for now. Right, we can reconnect this later, but let's say I'm already building. I should be designing only for now. This could be iron. Copper belt has to go somewhere over here. Also need copper wire for red chips. Maybe like so. Then the copper belt could just come past it like so. And then bend back. And copper wire we could output that over here. Underground it. That could be copper wire belt. And then we need green chip and plastics. I guess plastics we can build over here perhaps. Just right next to, we're gonna have like some storage over here. some in one way or another we'll see and then plastics can go over here somewhere this could be plastics and then we can belt plastics we can basically belt plastics over like so that could be plastics plastics would have to go in this belt then I think we'll bring green circuits down here in that case and just meet up at plastics somewhere over here like so These pipes have to move a little bit out of the way then. I guess this belt could be here, actually. Still, these pipes have to move out of the way. Which one is going to be oil? I see water is going to be right. Oil is going to come from here. So it makes sense that water is on the right side, oil on the left side. So oil has the inside corner. Then it actually maybe makes sense to flip this around. That oil is on the far away one and water on the nearby one. Since oil is gonna have the inside corner over here. Something like so. And water is also needed for oil cracking. As well as for sulfur actually, and sulfuric acid, but we can just lead it through the oil refineries. Right, so let's get rid of this. <laughs> I think we're gonna use this guy.
Right, so now water comes out over here. That can continue to the other oil products which need water. Oh, this thing has grown right now. Are the all four of these complete now? I think they are. All right, we are at big bite as I should be warping out. So all four of these uh, corner turrets are complete by now. Don't really want to research stuff just for the researching. Yeah, we're not gonna do that just yet. I think uh, the base is gonna go idle until we have actually built up science. Of course, we're still gonna be. We have like these uh, storage chests over here, which can have up to 2,000 science packs. So that we can still uh, work on. Military science is a ways to go. We underbuilt that a little bit. Big biters, yeah. Um, right. <laughs> Let's take a look. Are they already arriving? Not quite yet. My <laughs> Here you see the effect of, of all those corpses. Yeah. Stone is almost out as well. I do want to get red chips on before I warp out because I will lose my train of thought since this can actually be like so plastics can come out like so oil does not need to continue and now we come out with plastics like so which may be better alright this this part is then sort of done. That can go up to here. And then red chips come out through here. We can go with underground belt. Yeah, and then we can we can snake our way out to blue signs later on. Alright, so that's done. It is time to warp. I have my harvester platforms. Uh, I think I actually lost all my extra warp teleporter so let's put those in the chest so I can grab those later the thing will spawn back on the platform so let's make a save and then we'll warp out uh, I guess it's warp zone 28 double Z hey Cillian thanks for your subscription to um, Amazon Prime did you know if you have a Amazon Prime thing going on you can get a free Twitch subscription every month which still supports the streamer without costing you anything yourself. That's a great deal, isn't it? Anyway. <laughs> Man, I don't I cannot I cannot say that in a normal in a normal voice. It's just too cringy. Well the, the big guys start coming. Let's push the button. Oh yeah, we should get that warp sound. The beeping. Okay, looks like we have consistent beeping. That means not too many flamethrowers are being active at the same time. Right, we are at about 30 FPS. I guess the stream is in 30 FPS anyway. So maybe you don't really see it just yet, how bad it is. This world reminds us of home. Alright, that's good. That means it's like a, some sort of a default settings place. Alright, I am gonna drive out here. I want to mine double iron and I don't want to do it at home because my mining platforms are just defended by gun turrets. Or even uranium at the, at the start. So if we place the mining platforms somewhere far away, they will get way less attacks. Basically only by the pollution they generate themselves until the war platforms pollution cloud catches up with those uh, mining platforms. And since we have only gun turrets there, we cannot really efficiently deal with the attacks and at some point they're just going to get overrun. Also, ammo distribution to the mining platforms is not automated. Oh, a chest. Can we reach that? I don't think so. We have a couple spots of landfill. These loot chests are a mistake, man. They basically just cost you time at this point. There is nothing we really need from it. I mean... 
could I really not live without these 95 pipes and some power lines and stuff? I guess the time I lost was way more valuable than the gains from that loot chest. But I cannot help myself, man. It's free loot. I mean, 67 copper plates. Who can say no to that? Yeah, green modules for the mining platforms are definitely on the program. I first want to get some productivity though for the labs and for the, at least for blue and military signs, I think. Some additional productivity on top of the whatever is in the war beacon, because they just stack. Okay, here's a giant iron patch. That's gonna do it for us, I think. And cool, we have plenty. There's even oil close by. Alright, not too bad. That means we're just gonna mine double iron. So right harvester, plop, left harvester. Actually, I, I've, you can uh, you can overlap your gun turrets like so, plop. Looks very cursed, <laughs> but they still work and they still wa will warp back out correctly. At least I hope. <laughs> if, if not, it's already too late. Oh, these actually were almost dead. Um, all right, so we're gonna get attacks from this side for sure. Ah, uh, these were actually... Let's put some more ammo in these. Oh, that is a rich oil patch though. Can I resist? I think I just want to fill up those oil tanks. So we can mine oil through here. One of these pipes should contain oil. It's this one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just set up some pump jacks here with some gun turrets as well. It is just too good. A 3000% oil patch is very rich. And who knows when the next time when we find oil will be. Quickly cobble that together here. Okay, that is all hooked up together. Just want to leave myself a little bit of space to walk through the middle. Alright, that is all hooked up together. We, uh, we don't really have modules as yet. Two efficiency modules. I don't want to spend them here. This is gonna completely fill up our oil tanks, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's a lucky find. Right next to the iron as well. Is it under the radar vision? It is even under the radar vision of these... These things, so I don't need to place a radar. I do need to place... A bunch of gun turrets though. Also attacks from here, mostly I guess. Alright, at least in uh, Warptorio the gun, the gun turret damage has been buffed significantly. We do 21 damage, which means we one-shot small biters, so that's very ammo efficient. Okay, we should connect it to, to Again, I missed that. I, I, I messed something up in the settings. If, if the default Twitch sound plays, then... I, I don't get a message of the subscription in the chat or something. But uh, yeah, still thanks for the subscription. I, I uh, don't get a message of your name though. Hmm. 
I probably I should also put some ammo in those gun turrets on the right. I imagine they would work better if I did. No. Could be just like bias, but <laughs> Oh there's even one more. Man, there was just uh just the first biter already. Too much oil. Must grab it all. What happened to the idea that we were just gonna design blue signs and ignore the rest? Well, greediness basically. <laughs> Must have oil. Alright, we may not be able to leave this up all warp zone long when the biters get strong, but at least we can get a whole bunch of oil. 27k a minute, that means one full tank per minute. Okay, since attacks were coming from here, let's just... I'm out of ammo again. What else is new? Okay. Let's get the car. Okay, so that is a good uh, resource income for this warp zone. Let's see how long we can... I'm an idiot. I basically have like 4000 magazines, like literally right next to the, the oil outpost. All I needed to do is walk through this teleporter here, just grab some ammo from these chests. Let's grab from this one and this one, they are the least useful. And here I am with all my ammo. I don't want to come back here, so... Putting in a good amount. Alright. Handy, handy thing that uh, warp teleporter. Let's put uh, 400 ammo over there. Stone. No, I didn't think we're gonna mine the other things of stone and coal. I guess we could mine coal through here, but we have so much coal. 80,000 coal. At some point I'll have to move it all above ground after nuclear power. So perhaps it's even gonna be enough coal already to survive until that point. Anyway. We set up the miners, it is time to, let's make a save actually, 29B. Because we already did some stuff in the warp zone. Hopefully we can get everything up to blue science, science designed in this warp zone. I definitely need to check though if oil is actually being collected. Yeah, we see this number going up, so that's a good sign. These tanks are pretty full already though. I think we're gonna have to allow to fill up these tanks as well. I'm just gonna make sure we uh, empty out these ones first so we can deconstruct them later on. We'll see. I want to fill up everything with oil basically. Right, um, red chips, we kind of figured that out. I guess we're gonna figure out plastics now. So we need like a coal belt incoming. And we need a plastics belt to go out. And we need... And we need pipes to come in. Normally I would build like so. Right. Normally I'd build like so and have coal come in from the other side. Or, or just have petroleum gas from the other side and a double belt. So let's see if we can come up with something more compact than that. So what if... 
So we need two inserters next to this, two belts. What if this was just one further away? Thanks uh, for the subscription again. I didn't catch your name. I think I, I just messed something up. And if you subscribe through some means, then the the itch sound doesn't play. All right. Probably I want to. <laughs> that sound <laughs> still plays. <laughs> Thanks, Macha. Yeah, I noticed this last stream as well. I, I streamed a, a different mod not too long, uh, like yesterday, and there it was uh, working strange too. I, I didn't I didn't have time to figure that out yet. Between okay, this would work. Is it more compact though? It looks like it's one tile more compact, so we are gonna go with this design. Do we have space for power lines though? Kind of, yes. Like so. Alright, so I'm gonna imagine we're gonna need like four plastics or so for red chips. This is cool. Plastics is over here. Plastic just connects like so. And I guess we just copy this. And then we'll copy this part. We'll flip it vertically. And that can be plastics for low density structures later on. That will come out over here. Then we can have the coal belt, of course, will just continue to go down all the way. There's already plastics for low density structures. That means we don't need to later somehow get uh, petroleum gas over here to make plastics for low density structures. Alright, that is looking good as well. I guess we have all set up to start off red chip production already. So perhaps we should just get this build first and then design sulfur and engines for blue signs then we could also get our modules already like the productivity modules for the labs and um, I guess productivity modules for red chips would also not be bad especially now that we have eight of them but uh, let's see the war beacons range is up to there so let's just go this far for now uh, let's just build all of them. We should not be too pedantic about extracting the most out of every last resource all the effing time. Alright, that's copper. This is iron. I guess we can just build it. Don't be afraid, just build it. It is gonna have to be all the way down here. And so... Alright, this is going to be the end base, so let's make nice cable designs. Oh, come on. I'm placing these in a line, can you not just... Alright, it's connected in a line, that is nice. Let's connect it to here for now, so it is powered. That means these should start inserting... Iron. Alright, that, that will work. 
Later we can maybe just place a substation here or so. Okay, this needs to go on which one belt? I guess this is gonna need to go... Somewhere down here. Okay, we still have to figure out the pipe, so let's not automate that just yet. Gas oil pipe. Would it hurt if I just use both of those for oil? I don't think I'm going to use that for anything else. This side is going to be oil. Again, iron for magazines gone. So I can just do this. This is going to pop out one more tile later as well. I have to keep that into account, actually. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna need to move out yet one more tile, eventually. Because these pipes are gonna pop out one more space. Okay, this is water. We don't really need water from the surface anymore later. So... Let's for now also just build it like so. We do need water. Later so we will have water on the boiler floor. We're gonna have to bring this water up instead of down. We're gonna bring this water up through here, through here, to here, and then it can go towards oil processing and stuff. No, no, the, the other custom sub uh, or the custom actions they did work, like the the alert something got broken sound for the for the bits. Everything is still calm. Look how many groups of biters there are coming in simultaneously already. Let's uh, switch on the pollution cloud. Okay, this is our fair pollution cloud from the mining and stuff. This is the war platforms pollution cloud. Looks like they will it will catch up over here, not too long in the future. Let's continue this. See if we can get this up and running. Right, so copper has to go connect to this belt over here. Let's just do this for now. Later we, we, we'll, we will leave the space open for as long as we can, so we have the option to spaghetti some stuff around to different places. Out of coal again up here. Yeah, this is uh, not the greatest system. All right. So that means this is automated green chips, right? Finally a fair number. I think I'm just gonna save some of those in a chest over here. Perhaps uh, like a splitter or something. We want to later probably store a lot of green chips. Let's for now just go with one chest though. I guess we're producing... I know, wait, it's fast enough. Yes, yeah, fast enough. All right. We want output priority towards red chips, though. Let's, uh, I guess let's connect the oil belt. All right, that's already not good. I guess we can go underground, something like so. Then we could go like so with the oil. Oil inner pipe is going to be this one. A little dangerous because it's right next to this one. We are not using this one. So we probably should not be using this one. Let's turn it up. 
Yeah, I don't think we will be using that pipe, so this is probably good. And we can make it exactly to here. We can match it with the water pipe like so. Alright, we want to end up over here. Actually need two more oil refineries. I have eight of them here. Let's hope this fits. I didn't really... Maybe I sh should... I guess... Uh, I get, No, I guess I'll figure that out. We have a lot of space here. There's no, nothing else logical to build here except... Except uh, oil cracking, lubricant maybe, rocket fuel. Yeah, I think we'll be good. Limit the chest again. Oh yeah, I guess. It does not really matter. I just like to keep a little bit of space so I can insert some stuff myself. Hey, good morning, SDB. Alright. So, it doesn't matter where these pipes connect. Don't really think so. And try to make it look nice. How is this? On a split. On a split. Split, split. Yeah. We may have to do some belt weaving here later, so let's not. Let's not build too many unnecessary pipes. Well, this is already for oil, uh, advanced oil processing, but also for sulfur. We will already need to build this water pipe. Sulfur is going to be here, but for now, let's connect oil. Actually, let's just process, let's just make our first oil. We can connect the power line to this nice thing here as well, like so. That also should power us, and we are processing the first oil. Nice. Oh, we even get an achievement for that. First petroleum gas after <laughs> 13 and a half hours. <laughs> well, I guess that's Wartorio. Wartorio is basically just a vanilla factorio which distracts you with huge biter attacks and needing to deconstruct and construct miners all the time. That is why it all takes so long. <laughs> right, so we have green chips. Now we need red chips. I guess let's build this as well already. This looks pretty, pretty definitive. Green chips like so. The green chips has to connect here. It would look nicer. Okay, that chest is not going to happen if the pipe is here. I guess two chests is good enough. Let's let's do two full chests. We also have another chest of green chips up here potentially. Man, are we already going to call this hard with just grenades? That is kind of rough. Let's grab another little bit. Yeah, it's gonna be good once that is automated to just come from the top. And just go to here and that's all. Perhaps I could just do this for now. Disconnect it over here and I could bring twice the coal. Stuck in infrastructure. Oh, that means I could actually just bring a lot more coal. Let's, let's just invest this time once. And then we won't need to do it for until after Blue Science is organized, I guess. 
Because now the coal from the top will not flow to the bottom. So we can put some additional coal in here. So we're also going to make plastics, which requires bunch loads of coal. Oh, wait. You think that would keep going for a while? This belt is now disconnected, so it won't flow back to below ground. We need some sort of power line here as well. It is supposed to be red chips later on. Can I still get it out? Kinda. Uh, how about so? No. No, that no, no, no. And then we're gonna have to, I guess, weave it with the copper a little. Kinda don't like having moving bells right next to these uh, platforms because they push you around once you as soon as you warp out, it's a little bit annoying. But this is all underground. Underground bells you can just stand on. And it uh, won't move you. Uh, but splitters and normal bells, they just push you with the belt. I guess we could do something like this. Then we have plenty of space to get out with our red belts. Okay, now we need to do belt weaving. Red chips is never gonna be red belt, so we're just gonna go yellow belt. we don't need to do belt weaving we can just do this let's uh, put this back how it was like so we don't need to do belt weaving we can just I mean this is uh, I know we do need to do belt weaving okay yeah no we do need to do belt weaving Yeah, let's belt weave, why not? It's not like we can avoid it anyway, so let's just... Let's just commit to it. <laughs> this belt goes underground through so, some sort of a Möbius loop. It doesn't interfere with this belt. It's like they twist around each other or something. Okay, that's gonna be red belts, All right. Revolution 32% again, what's going on? But now we need to design this. I think this is gonna have some sort of a similar... I think we can actually just copy this belt setup from the labs and we don't need to figure that out every single time or do we uh, it's a little bit unclear where i should actually paste it so let's do it once more we have all of these belts right okay so how did i do that again <laughs> Okay, so we need to insert, like so, and like so, and opposite, opposite like so. Then we just underground this, underground this. And output can be in the middle, on the middle belt. Then we just power line pattern everything full like so. Alright, that should work.
Uh, this may be in the way. It's alright. You can move this down one tile. Yes, good spaghetti. <laughs> What's the next research going to be? Something blue signs, I imagine. Perhaps advanced oil processing. Though the need for that has just diminished quite a bit. Because we got this uh, giantly super great new oil source. Which uh, fills us over a tank of this oil per minute. So we already got like at least 25 new tanks full of oil. It's probably gonna fill up before I have to deconstruct it. Okay, actually water is bad. Water is very bad. Can I connect water? I didn't connect water. Uh, not really here. Okay, the pollution clouds start to connect. Yeah, no, I cannot really connect water. We're gonna have to live that out. Oh man, the, the lag with all the dead biters on the ground is really bad. Let's switch over to efficiency models for now. That should save us a bunch of power. Anyway, we're not researching, we're just making cheaper parts. Alright, let's fill in these. I want to get rip chips up before I warp out, I'm not sure if I can. This is actually pretty horrible to build, this uh, this kind of setup, but it is the... The most space efficient one, I think. That's not bad. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11 tiles wide. I think that's way less wide than having belts on the outside on both sides. If you do only assembles on one side, you can you can do it on two belts, just three ingredients and the output, and then just filter off the output at the end. Alright, that does not look bad. Now we just need to get plastics up. It means we're gonna need a whole bunch of of underground belts, which we do have. Last assembler is missing belt. Ah yeah. Good catch. Alright. Now we're just gonna build the oil processing. That is gonna take a little bit of time. For now though, we only need to do this. Water we don't need yet. So I did not really decide yet what is gonna be where. But then I sh basically should do oil cracking first. I'm thinking maybe I want to switch my normal design. So do heavy oil on the outside. And petroleum gas on the inside. How does it line up here? Actually that could line up quite... No, that does not really line up nice. Mm. Okay, so ideally I guess we would want petroleum gas to go here. We also need petroleum gas somewhere over here. How about so? That would mean petroleum gas in the middle. Or I just, uh, I don't know. This is also perfectly fine then, I guess. So is this. Alright, what about oil cracking? Is it gonna matter? It's probably more easy if it's on the bottom side.
All right, I do not want to design the whole thing before I commit to it, so I guess we'll just we're just gonna do this. Perhaps I don't need. Let's uh, let's hold off on building those tanks anyway until we have heavy oil. For now, we can just connect it like so. There's the plastics output. Coal input. Uh, I guess let's just keep it as much out of the way as possible for now. I'm just gonna connect it, we'll worry later about the details. Okay, that should be plastics. That means we are starting to make red chips. So blue sign is gonna look something like this. Do I want to build it in the middle or... So I can have a belt on both sides. Later there will be even more belts of space, so... Let me think. We need iron and... We need iron to come through here. We need copper to come through here. We're gonna do more belt weaving, it seems. I think I'm better off keeping this just at the top. Yeah, these are uh, decisions like these are reasons why you probably should design everything first before you start building. But I don't want to spend five hours doing that, so we're just gonna build it and roll with the errors we make. Petroleum middle lane. <laughs> Rebel, okay, we're gonna make petroleum the middle lane. Let's do that. Good call. If, if this if this goes wrong at any point, we will just blame Matya. Petroleum middle lane. There we got it. I think heavy oil still makes sense. Like here, we can build lubricant right next to here. And then light oil is gonna go this way. This is our, our build. I never built oil processing like this before. Does that even work? I think it just works like like it should work. Beautiful. <laughs> Fake it until you make it. <laughs> yeah. Chat always gets the blame. Chat, you being chat is a hard job, man. You always get blamed, but the 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 few moments where you get your sweet satisfaction of uh, discovering a critical error makes uh, makes up for all the hardship or at least that's probably what streamers tell themselves okay there's a lot of oil processing I think we're gonna run out of water soon it's already big biter time again yeah we should uh, be moving out So, so peaceful and quiet down here. Let's just actually quickly pop out here, see what's going on. Uh, yeah, not good. Let's, uh, let's not do that too much. Actually, that's pretty dangerous. I could just by accident walk in here without uh, paying attention. Perhaps we should like wall that off or something. I didn't think of that. I mean, my, my central spot is nicely defended, but here it's... Uh, Quite dangerous to be. Pipe wall and make the biters pay for it. Right, we, sh we could have had plastics if I actually remember to build the inserters. We could have been producing red chips already, but unfortunately we are not. Alright, here come the red chips. We need to stash red chips in the chest as well. It's gonna go here. 
For now the red chip line is gonna end over here. Uh, we don't need to insert one is gonna be enough. Let's not let's not kid ourselves. This inserter is gonna keep up with our red chip production. Even though I wish we would be making more. Alright, oil processing is outside of the war beacon though, so that's gonna be pretty juicy power consumption. Oh, actually I need to... Oh no, dude. 2.4k ammo. I need to deconstruct the... This uh, oil field actually, before I can move out. I don't want to, we are collecting so nice oil. Let's check, is the tank almost full? Oh, this is... <laughs> yeah. No to self. Install that mod. Which... Okay, these are like 80% full. One and a half million and 700k. Over two million oil. Okay, let's um, get out of here. Just a little more, just a little more. I saw something else which I need to do. These uh, are out of coal. That is bad. How much is left of my 80k coal? 49k. Okay, we may not have that much coal like I imagine. And I didn't smell steel actually. Okay, we have to refill ammo. Let's put the rest of the coal up here as well. Okay, we have a bunch of coal in here. Ah, okay, 10k coal is still in here. So that's good. Let's grab iron for ammo. Also, should have been smelting steel. Max everything out. Iron for ammo. Empty, empty, empty. All of these were fully empty. 2.1k ammo. Okay, we don't have that much time actually. Big biters are spiking in. There is one. Let's see if he dies fast or not. They die fairly fast, but it is pretty expensive to, to get rid of them. I'm just postponing because I want more oil. Stop being greedy. Okay, not all of these are even active anymore. Alright, let's let's go, let's go. Take it down, take it down. Also, big biters could be attacking this area right now. So that is also less than ideal. Scrape the last bits of oil by connecting, deconstructing from the back. All right, that that's it. No power line shall be left behind. Okay, we didn't get actually that many attacks here, I don't think. There's hardly any corpses here, some up there, but that's all. I wonder, I changed the settings, the... Yeah, it's still up there. The night visions should be better visible now. I have more saturation, a little bit less contrast and more brightness, which should make for a better visibility during the night. Now I can see these guys coming, which otherwise surely would have wrecked me. But that should make the screen a bit more visible during the night, which was... It's always a little bit of a problem with the, like, vanilla... Uh, with the default settings. Alright, this is... Uh, I like how this area looks, man. This looks awesome. 
How is water? Uh, basically almost out. Okay, time to go to the next warp zone. Red chips are up. We can start to make our productivity modules and our efficiency modules even. Before we even have blue signs. Let's make a save before the game crashes on me. Z. Because we're gonna warp out. Okay, I'll just leave this on a little bit. I'll read chat. Uh, let's let's warp. I think I can read chat in 30 seconds. Speedrun reading chat. Hi everybody. Hello Stefan. Americans can be proud of your oil greed. Pump some water now. Yeah, now. <laughs> no. We'll pump some water after arriving in the next warp zone. <laughs> Build a wall of pipes. <laughs> Planning is boring. Yeah. <laughs> right. First thing first, we need water or everything will grind to a halt. I hope this survives. My inventory is left somewhere. It is not good. Where is inventory? Probably down here. Give me my water pump. I even still have it. I fully expected to have have, have left it behind on some planet. Right, some quick repairs are in order. What type of planet is it actually? This world reminds us of home again. I guess hopefully soon some more interesting planets should come. Alright. So nothing too serious. We did get some damage, but that's alright. Yeah, we need to catch up a bit on ammo. On ammo again. Alright. This time, I need to collect the platforms. This time I'm just going to place the miners and be done with it. I want to get blue signs up. Okay, let's get two of them again. I'll use my speed up. Save some precious seconds in real life. Alright, let's uh, find ourselves some patch again. This time I guess we'll drive left. Left is officially the best way, the best direction to drive in Factorio, if you didn't know. On the right side you have this this menu often popping up and blocking some sections. North and south is uh, less far visible, more easy to run into biters. Especially south, with your hotbar being in the way, you can basically do. <laughs> you can basically, I think you can be inside the range of a behemoth worm without even noticing. You see that nest was in the south, and I already triggered them by accident. But left, there is nothing in the way. You have the best vision if you drive left. And you cannot zoom out. I wish you could zoom out like a little bit more than this. I saw that nest being generated as we as it came into. Uh, we were gonna trigger some more biters, I guess. No. Yeah, we are mass generating terrain here, together with the war platforms pollution cloud, which is also mass generating terrain next to the platform. So terrain generation can be a little bit caught off guard every now and then. When it has to generate a lot of terrain at the same time. Alright, here is iron. It is a little bit right next to these biters though. Medium worms. I think we can do the funny the funny thing. Let me check here. Uh, yeah, most of these are pretty badly out of ammo about this one? 
it's also pretty bad out of ammo. I guess we'll have to restock these before the next warp zone for sure. We're gonna make ourselves a little bit more space. I hope. This could go home. Do another chicken save. We should save on the new warp zone, I mean. We are on a new warp zone, we should make a save. Of course. That, that, that is why I make the save right now. But with the platforms, you can just do things like this. And then just try to deconstruct it before the turrets die. You cannot do it if there's trees in the way. Oh, there's a rock. Oh, no, this is too late. No, no, no. Too many worms. Alright, we made ourselves a little bit more space. So the biters won't be attracted to the platform. Just by vicinity of the gun turrets on the platform. So we can go a little bit on the top here. Yeah, but we lost a bunch of gun turrets. It looks like only two. most expensive thing we lost though is the ammo inside. This is all still survived somehow. So yeah, it's a bit expensive if it goes wrong. <laughs> it can destroy a lot of things on your platform, but it is a pretty easy way to relatively risk-free take out uh, a chunk of biters. This is basically the equivalent of uh, that mod which autofills your turrets, you know, from your inventory. You can just go and the autofill mod just puts ammo in and you can just uh, take down biters way easier thanks to that mod. Another quality of life mod which makes the game, the actual gameplay much easier. But we can kind of do the same in Warptorio by placing those platforms just smack down in the middle of the nest. <laughs> and have all the gun turrets pop up, teleport right in front of these medium, uh, of these biters faces. That's okay, pretty funny. <laughs> how are we gonna how are we gonna build the 42 sciences on the little warp factory floor yeah for those who didn't know i started another stream just like uh, this is my regular sunday stream and uh, i've started a whenever i feel like it stream which is the science galore mod which basically adds uh, 36 new science packs to factorio in between all the other ones everything is way more expensive because of that so yeah, it's kind of a, a cool concept. Uh, it's going pretty well so far. <laughs> you can check that out in, in the VODs and browse through the bit if you like to watch even more of uh, my stuff. Alright, we can switch back over to productivity modules. Let's check out actually. We are pumping less than 300 water a second if we don't use productivity modules. Now, immediately power rises. Uh, this needs a little bit of time to... Actually, it's not that much worse. Like, now we're slightly over. I guess we're not actually producing anything that makes... Uh, yeah, production is basically not going at all. Alright. Platforms placed, science, uh, stuff. Let's do stuff. How many How many of these do I need? Productivity modules. We want those for the labs, for blue science, for red chips, for military science. Red and green science, I think, don't think that is worth the extra power cost, but... I mean, red costs uh, like three plates per science packs. I think green is like seven. Military in blue is like 25, so that makes a lot more sense to put productivity in there. Right, so I have 16 laps. I wonder, can I not make more laps? I think I can make more laps. 24 laps. I mean, this space is empty. I'm not really planning anything here. If 
20 or 24. 24 was a bit tight though. Let's go 20 laps. Yeah, I'll extend that. These belts come down nice here as well, so that also hooks in uh, more nice. And we can speed through signs a little bit faster than later on. Okay, so 20 laps has 40 modules. 40 plus 12 here. 24 here. That's uh, 64. Then we have these guys. 32 and 64 is 96. 102. So basically we need to make another 102, at least 102 productivity modules. We want productivity module 2 in the war beacon as soon as we can. So we can make a little bit more. We can, let's say, if we make 150 or so. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty. Oh, that's a lot of chips already. Are we out of copper? We out of copper. <laughs> I, I turned all of my copper into green chips. I forgot I. Yeah, that eats up copper pretty fast. I, is, <laughs> I assume. Okay, do we have? We have 700 red chips then. Okay, then I probably want to make a little bit less. Let's just make 100 and... Let's just make 100 then. 102. Exactly like we calculated, because production is basically dead. Yeah, it doesn't matter what I do. Uh, production is going to be that until I mine copper, basically. Yeah, all red and green, all red and green science research is done. Antique quality of life. Turrets about 10 seconds to shoot. Uh, that uh, could be interesting. Wait, I think it is time to set up the rest. Let's actually just build this as well. So that we don't forget to take this into account. Alright, so this looks like one long belt, but actually this guy is going up and this guy is going down. So that is split down here. Alright, now we gotta design sulfur, sulfuric acid. I guess batteries already. And then engines. Then we can build blue signs. Let's build blue signs. We can just actually, for this we can just copy this, I guess. And literally just copy this. Except all of these belts are gonna go this way. Alright, do I want to put it this far out though? I don't know, I may... I may move ammo production downstairs. Actually, iron is again low on these guys. 
Yeah, I definitely want to... I don't want to keep filling these chests all game long. I think I want to... That actually could be a purpose for this uh, chest. If two chests of copper are gonna come up, this chest is gonna be free. We're gonna use coal over here and we're gonna produce ammo somewhere down here. And just belt the ammo up through this chest that comes out here. And from here we'll somehow connect it to uh, the ammo belt. And then ammo is fully automated as long as we have iron. We can get rid of this warning system, we can get rid of these chests, these assemblers. I think that's gonna be nice. So let's, uh, let's remind ourselves that ammo production should be somewhere down here. Not necessarily here, but, you know, somewhere. Looks like we are doing this now, for some reason. So that's the nice thing when you build like sort of modular. You can just copy paste extensions. Yeah, I think 20 is the right amount. Okay, we've got modules labs, that is very nice. Now we have disconnected our modules labs, which is not very nice. even have a nice opening to snake in yellow and purple signs later on which we're probably gonna make in this corner it is uh, we may just bring that over with bots I don't know I think I won't be able to belt around everything in this entire base so once we unlock bots we can do it with bots in the other playthrough the science glow with the 36 science packs I'm going to avoid bots altogether it's gonna be just be a huge belt infestation of 43 different science packs which somehow all get automated and made and transported to the labs at least that's the plan all right let's get a move on i'm again wasting much time with stuff which we don't need to waste much time on like this. <laughs> Alright, that could be blue signs. Okay, I just I'm just postponing this because this is gonna be hard. Let's just see. We we need uh, sulfur. We need sulfuric acid. I guess we need more than one sulfur. Because we need sulfur for science and for sulfuric acid. That's basically all, all the sulfur we need. So if I would move them... Actually, I could just build them like this, maybe. All of these sides are water. This is petroleum gas. Okay, let's keep it uh, ghosts again. We have water coming out here. Something like this could be the case. Oh, that even makes it all the way to there. Oh, this may be easier than I thought. Or is it? We still need to transport... This is connected, right? But can I still... This we can, this we can... We do need iron to this guy. Belt or chest? 
with iron. Let's just remind ourselves by doing this. We even have some space left over, somehow. <laughs> I thought that was going to be impossible to fit in here. We also need to extract the asset, that is very true. Unfortunately, we do not have space for more tanks. Could do like two of them. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> you even can just power it simply by... <laughs> this is... This is insane. I didn't think that would go so well. <laughs> I was postponing it for a reason. Or so I thought at least. Okay, let's connect the water. Okay, that should be water. Then we need to connect petroleum gas. That's going to be sulfur, man. That is amazing. Right? Not right. Oh, wait. Right. Sulfur. More sulfur. Nice. And I guess we want to bring this over to blue signs. We may just like output in a chest or something. Like so. And then output on a belt. We can then later, if we want to make like explosives or something, use like a requester chest and have bots bring sulfur over to explosives because we probably are not going to be able to connect that later on. Oh, we'll see. Can even walk through here. Yeah, one of the hardest parts of Warp Tour you is uh, trying to build the base so that you can still walk around. Because uh, everything is getting pretty, pretty tight. Alright. I guess we have a half belt of plastics. I think we can just side load this. Go here. And then we'll just somehow extract the sulfur while having the plastic continue. Should I use like a priority splitter like so? We need to combine this with engines somehow. Or am I too am I too cool to do it with a priority splitter? I am too old school. We can just do this. Requires a little bit more space though. But I'm just a little bit <laughs> I don't know, too proud I guess <laughs> to use the easy output, the, the easy way of underground splitters. Let's limit this chest. We don't need like tons of it. Especially not with Especially not with uh, basic oil processing. We can expand this further once we have advanced oil processing, which is more than twice as efficient. I think I should just quickly pop outside to verify how things are going. Okay, no lag just yet. That's a sign that there's not too many biters here yet. 4k ammo. It's not enough iron. This is going to be far enough out to not uh, mingle with the pollution cloud from the war platform. Sorry about the excessive zoom speed, <laughs> it sometimes happens. And it's nice that we cleared out this portion of the nest. Biters would be roaming here, they would be attracted constantly by the gunfire. 
All right, but everything still looks all right. No turrets are out of ammo. All right, then we can pop back inside, uh, like so. Quick check on how water is doing. Okay, still pumping. Okay, now we can try to pump this empty again. Move it to the basement. Alright, so that is sulfur. We have two of the three ingredients, if we had copper, that is. Now we need... Um, now we need... Iron and... Iron and steel for engines, somehow. Okay, let's first try to design like batteries because sulfuric acid is going to be right here. Not going to be working with pumps, I don't think. There's just not really space for pumps. So batteries. Use a chest to feed batteries. Use a chest to extract. Batteries, we can maybe do two. Still using small power poles all over the place. Um, right, so let's see if pipe would go like that. That makes it exactly. We need to connect uh, here, so this could be an option, then this could go like so, that would be connected. You can even have like a assembler for temporary blue chips, our first blue chips to make stuff like the power armor and the legs. You could just hand feed that from this location, because that's also gonna connect to sulfuric acid then. So that also could be something like that. It is outside of the war beacon though, so maybe we want to do it inside of the range of the war beacon. The problem is we don't have sulfuric acid uh, there. I guess later on we may want to bring sulfuric acid outside. We could just weave that through this belt and hook it up to one of these pipes if we want to bring sulfuric acid outside, connect it to this guy so we can mine some uranium ore at some point without barrels. I left my car outside. The biters have been ignoring it. Let's <laughs> let's go pick up the thing. Alright, thanks biters for not destroying my car. 69 repair packs left. Hey, we have an expansion down here. Those guys weren't there, that was our approach drive. Okay, we are starting to run a bit out of ammo, looks like. Now only that guy. Yeah, the rest is still full. Right, nothing going on just yet. Now that we're here, probably we should do a coal refill. How is coal? 40k. Yeah, another reason to get electric uh, smelting is that we can stop hand feeding this. I do not want to rebuild the entire thing so I can automate coal distribution. I think I could do this 100 times before the time investment would pay itself back. And we're gonna change it anyway, so but we have still steel up here. Alright. Okay, this is done. That means we can upgrade military science as well. Now what else did we imagine? I still have a bunch of them left over. Red chips, I guess. Uh, 32, yeah, that's exactly the amount we needed. Gonna make... One more. 
for the next level of the war beacon. I think I'm just gonna roll with this. Maybe I should mirror that. It come here, like so, like so. Does it matter? No, it does not really matter. No, it does not matter. Okay, let's do this. And then we can later try to snake the pipe out through here. Okay, let's just restock. We are basically out of some stuff. Uh, let's, let's do keep track of gears and circuits. Five hundred gears. Yeah, I've been producing way too many circuits, man. Okay, inserters. I'm good on inserters. I just need the the other variants. Okay, we're good on the rest I think, pipes, we can get rid of the labs actually. Okay, we do not have a lot of bricks left over, we have some, I'm going to keep those for... Stuff like uh, refineries or maybe concrete even. I don't know when we'll mine stone again. Okay, we almost have 2k military signs already. That's not bad. We're basically out of stone bricks for walls. So, but yeah, this is good enough. Let's try to get this up now. That's too far. Nice and in a line. Yeah, this looks nice. Okay, let's uh, do at least something so that we don't forget that there should be a pipe going here. Somehow. Oh yeah, we should do, we should be making. Uh, I forgot about belts and undergrounds and stuff. Uh, belts. Tuk tuk tuk. Let's grab half of it. We'll just make a. Why is this chest not limited? Hmm. Okay. I guess let's do this amount. I'm never gonna need that many belts in Warptorio though. Alright, inventory is somewhat cleaned up. Okay, now we need to get engines done. We need already 10 engine assemblers just to feed blue signs. By the time we have yellow signs, I guess we're gonna have the productivity bonus to not need to make extra electric engines. So we're just gonna build 10. Like so. Am I gonna build them in a line or am I gonna do the same thing like with signs? That takes up basically all of the space literally all of the space that's probably not a good bet since uh, more stuff will have to flow up here like copper we could actually bring up copper through here I think I left space for that but I don't know I don't want to give myself only one way out and then something's not working Yeah, I, I went to take underground belts and then I forgot about it, so yeah. 
not that the base is producing now, but anyway. Let's see, we can get this all the way down to here. Perhaps. Eventually bells will have, or engines will have to connect to here. Then we can go here. Like so. And red chips will then have to come from here. Perhaps I should... I don't know, maybe red chips can come from up here. That's not really a problem, I don't think. Theoretically. Theoretically, that is red chips. Alright, so engines. I guess this is a temporary thing. Maybe I should not plan for that, especially if we are bringing sulfuric acid over here. I should have my temporary blue chip thing connected to this instead of here. So let's get rid of that. Yeah, I don't think we we actually will need that. And we can also just probably bring this out of the way a little further, but maybe not. <laughs> that would still connect like so. It does give us a little extra space, not a lot though. I don't know yet. Let's see if I can... Can I get uh, the other stuff? Do I need something else in here? There is explosives, but I don't think I'm going to make explosives. Only the stuff for science. I think we're good on that. We have enough sulfuric acid for blue chips and batteries. Sulfur for blue science. Plastics for red chips. Plastics for low densities. Yeah, I think, I think we're good. That means I can start trying to cram stuff like pipes and gears perhaps even underground pipes as well in here so we can make uh, we can lead iron in here make the stuff we need for engines and to lead that up next to the engines belt perhaps like so we also need to have steel coming in but perhaps we need an iron and steel I guess uh, I guess we are going to weave that in here as well. Okay. So, cool out there. Uh, red belts. Yeah, we don't have a choice then. Coal is gonna have to connect like so. That is gonna be coal. There's gonna be a pipe. Does that stretch all the way to there? Like so it does. So I guess we're gonna have the pipe. The pipe can then theoretically move. And we can have... A red belt coming in here with iron and steel weave weave totally not cursed it can come out here then we can do our thing to make the engines and then later the copper for low density structures can go over the top here we can also use the steel for low density structures and robot frames and whatnot it's so easy to get totally immersed in this uh, design process and just totally ignore the fact that our bases are out of ammo for already 20 minutes. Or that iron is low. Big biters are about to arrive. So easy to miss all of that. Water for acid. We have water for sulfuric acid coming from down here. 
to the uh, advanced oil processing. It is connected to sulfur. It is not connected to. You were right. I thought you. I thought you meant we hadn't set it up, but I just didn't connect it. All right, let's just insert one stack of iron just to see it work. All right, that's in here. It is in here. Could make some batteries. I'm not that far away from having bots. I don't have copper though, so we'll do that later. Let's first design engines. Let's get blue signs up. That is what is holding the entire playthrough back at the moment. Okay, let's see. Ten engines is going to be this tall. I would like some... These are optional, but I would like to have a stash of undergrounds ready to pick off. Since you always need them in giant amounts whenever you do something related to oil. Once we set up advanced oil and oil cracking, we suddenly need like two or three hundred of these. It's pretty hard to get to get those. These do fit next to each other though. Let's flip them around and I can flip this one against the back. I guess we're going to use fast and sailors here as well. So this could be the iron input belt. Actually, this is the iron input belt. We just need to filter off steel. So let's for now remind ourselves iron needs to go like this. Plop in here. Then only steel is left. And then we can... One steel can combine with plastics. Like so. For low density structures already. And the other steel can go like so for engines. It's gonna be quite hard though to... To fit that in here properly. The thing is... We're gonna need three inserters. We need to make sure steel is on the far side of that belt. I think uh, this is going to stay empty, this spot. Perhaps we will just do the blue chip here, just to make it scenic. Because this looks horrible at the end here. This looks nice. <laughs> then we don't get the productivity bonus. It's so what? It's only blue chips. Not that expensive anyway, right? <laughs> blue chips. No need to get productivity on that. Let's get productivity on red signs instead. The music does sound uh, normal for me as well. Perhaps you have like, um, can you play back at different speeds or something? Is my music running at 55 UPS, 55.7 or something? <laughs> All right, so let's try to get this thing done. I guess engines can just be coming in from a little further away. Right, two engines things. Let's design here. We have two belts, two belts. We are getting damaged. It is big biter time. What am I doing? I just spoke about it and I just blatantly ignore everything. Okay, now we are getting lag here, so it is quite busy. Let's do another sprite count. Sprites. Over here. 80,000 sprites are being drawn on the screen. So that is the cause of the lag again. Okay, I do not have anything important to pick up. Everything is on the platform, right? What is in this, this new chest? 10 storage tanks, 4 assemblers. Okay. This is an exercise. Let's not go pick that up. Let's warp out. By the time, <laughs> by the time I finish talking, I will have spent more resources. But by the time I would have picked it up, <laughs> I would have spent more resources than that would cost to make. So let's just press the warp button. We are doing economic warps. 
They were spending 120 magazines a minute right now. It is just before actual big biters start arriving. They are already being spawned, but it takes them a while to get over here. So everything is just medium biter still. Oh, there's one of the first big ones, I guess. Alright. That's our sign to push the button. Ah, low latency mode, alright. Good to know. Yeah, if design and building time was not a factor, then you could basically try to design the optimal build and design endlessly, tinker endlessly with your designs. But if you want to get something done, you probably just have to build suboptimal designs and just get the thing going on the way. Especially because it's not, especially if it's unlikely to be the final build. then it becomes even less important. Okay, 88k. Let's first do the, the maintenance parts. We refill steel. Bunches and bunches of steel. We go refill ammo. And refill coal. And then we head out for the miners. We're starting to have a nice morning ritual on our New warp zone worlds. Okay, coal still good up here. I forgot my water pump. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> Cannot stand that. Two million water. I always forget my water pump. How much coal is in here still? Let me through. 35k. Okay, that's gonna be good. Gonna be good for this warp zone. This is a dangerous place to hide away my inventory okay furnaces are not anywhere near being out of coal but I will forget once I go into the into the design phase again so I'm filling them anyway Someone should make a Warptorio mod mod. That if you forget a what, that if a water pump gets destroyed or left behind on any planet, you die. There should be dire consequences to that, man. <laughs> Alright. All resources except for water and uh, except for copper and stone are acquired in decent quantities. I guess I could hook up a new water pump. Let's just not spend time redesigning the entire thing. We just go out here. Uh, that doesn't fit. But that's gonna be barbecued by my flamethrowers in no time though. Anyway. Let's try to hook up this thing. We just try to flip around these two. And this one. That's the only flamethrowers which can reach that pipe. Nah, it's too dangerous. Let's not do that. Water can get destroyed. We have 2 million water. It's enough for this warp zone. Let's get out there. 4 minutes already gone on this warp zone. And I'm still hanging around here. Okay, let's drive south this time. And, uh, <laughs> and find out how dangerous that actually is. Driving south at full speed. Could claim that iron patch, it's way too close to the platform though. And thanks uh, laughing man for uh, the raid. SF for pump. <laughs> Driving south is especially dangerous if you try to read chat at the same time. Hope you're having a great night. Oop. Oh, too late, they're already on me. Thanks man. 
I'm even ignoring loot chests just to rechat. That is some proper dedication, isn't it? Not gonna ignore those uh, red chips though. And the other one is already too late to see what's inside. Right, I want to find some copper and probably iron. Here we have iron. Let's just be totally baller and do it like this. Now we just need to find some copper. Did I place the right one? Yeah, okay, <laughs> left one. We have some stone here. We could be mining some stone as well. It wouldn't be too hard to set up. Ignoring loot. Something is missing. Oh god, is it copper? I didn't even... Didn't even check what was going on. There is no copper and no coal, it seems like. Well, looks like we are double mining iron again. Which is fine, I guess. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> I would have searched for at least 10 more minutes <laughs> before I realized what was going on. Something is missing, I wonder what. <laughs> yeah. Alright. We're gonna mine that stone then. Snagging some stone. Let's uh, put a raider up here. First of all, to just plop down some more chunks into existence, like this loot chest. With 12 underground bells, no tanks, that's not worth my time anymore. See, stone was the right side, so we need to hook that up to here. Could actually use some red bells and a lot of miners. I don't want to build too extensive and have to... Uh, why, why, why do I build like this? This is a temporary setup. Let's just put the power lines on the outside. Just throw in a belt like so. And I I guess if we just side load onto a red belt, we can have a red belt-ish worth of production. 24 miners, not gonna be enough. Okay, this is all my miners, so that is how many there's gonna be. That means I still cannot make my efficiency modules. That would have been great, especially for these miners. So here I manually need to set up my gun turrets again. Where are attacks gonna come from? Here, likely. I think we just will drive around a little bit more. Let's plop down these gun turrets. I think it is likely we can fill this build this buffer system quite quickly though there's not that many chests here let's just go 25 per gun turret like so that's a lot easier well this, this is a strategically located mine. It is protected by cliffs on the south side. Not really though, they could sneak through here. Alright, let's just place gun turrets everywhere. Don't oversink it. Design blue signs already. Alright, that'll do. It's often on those missing planets, it's always the... I mean, if it's iron, it's always bad. But if it's not iron which is missing, it's always the exact resource you were planning to mine. That specific warp zone, right? 
Alright, at least we've got cool uh, stone coming in now. Alright, 10 minutes spent. I do have my car. Where is my other car? I think I lost my other car somewhere earlier on. I had a I had a moment with some uh, some biters, I remember. I think my car got destroyed in the process. Alright, so no production. That means we <laughs> whoa. Upgrade splitter where stone exists. Oh yeah, ex yeah. Good call again. Half work from my side, preparing a red belt of stone and then not upgrading this side of the of the thing. Let me out. So this limits the throughput basically to a yellow belt. And we are not gonna need that much stone over here, so we'll also upgrade this. Alright, now we're actually fully mining. All of these miners are active now. We can soon get even more mining productivity. We've been running on 100% mining productivity bonus for the entire game, basically. But now at Blue Science we can get another 5 levels. And then with Purple Science another 5, so that's gonna grow uh, in size as well. And you take the credit. <laughs> oh, thanks Adam Husnick as well for the <laughs> for the original comment. Yeah. <laughs> right, uh, we were doing this uh, before we discovered we were under attack by big biters. So we need to to grab. I guess it's gonna be there's gonna be some output from pipes and gears somehow combined on a belt on this one then we're going to have to put steel I forgot already I think this was steel steel has have to go on on the close by side so we have to grab it from the close by side because the engine's output will be on the far side of the belt. So basically... Something like this could be the case. That would work. The thing is, how do we power this? We can power it like so. But that does not power the actual assembler. So we're gonna need to do some underground the underground shenanigans. And I guess since we're only grabbing from this belt, this is gonna be the underground belt. Like so then. And then we can put power lines, actually we can put small power lines on this. That powers everything. Okay, that is gonna be our setup, I think. Now we just need to copy this. Five times. Does this work? This does work. Three, four, five. There's ten engine assemblers. Okay, that's gonna do it. Let's build up the first few. I'm gonna have a red underground belt, it seems. Ah no, we can still do it with yellow. So this is where pipes and gears are going to have to come in. <laughs> that even could work like so. You can even prioritize these pipes over these pipes. What a mess this is. Right. 
I do want to store some normal pipes. I guess I could store normal pipes like so. What side does this output on? I always forget. Every single time. That was the wrong inserter. Other one please. Thank you. Okay, on this side. That is not good. We need the pipes to be on the other side. Uh, let's, let's just do this then. Like so. Iron gear is gonna go on that side. Iron is gonna come down the middle. And even these could be producing pipes as well. Underground pipes. And we need some pipes from the that one as well. So this, <laughs> that does it. And we still have space for other stuff here. Does it actually work though? I mean, we may be needing iron for other purposes as well. Kinda locked myself into iron going down here. I guess we could still... We could say just uh, let steel go to the... No, that doesn't work either. Steel. Okay, we, we, we have to see on which side of the belt steel is going to be. That could make things a lot easier. So this way we could have iron coming up here. Iron would have to be on the top side of the belt. We should have iron on the top side. It goes here, then it can go here towards... Oh no wait, there's a steel. Okay, steel should be on the top side of the belt. Steel. Iron goes here automatically, steel goes here. All iron is gonna go there, that is not good. Ah. Wait. Now iron should be on the top side. If iron is on the top side here... Iron is on... <laughs> can you even follow that? What is this even? Iron is on the top side here. Then we can get rid of this. Iron and steel are both gonna go here. Iron is on the top side. This is not working. Or is it? No, it is not working. This, this should be steel. But we don't need that much steel. We don't need that much steel at all. This guy is going to be able to keep up with the steel demand for engines easy. Right, so iron is going to go on this belt, but it will be stopped here. Only steel will be transferred. And then we can do steel for low density structures and whatnot. And we can still have a belt of iron going up as well. So iron, plastics and steel and copper can still all go up to do whatever we need to do up here okay so now let's connect iron and steel and see if this actually works and i said iron should be on the top right yeah iron should be on top iron on top the rest is automatically right let's connect iron on the top and see how that goes Right, we have iron coming in here. Okay, we're not gonna have the red chip chest over there. Eventually, let's go like so. Okay, coal is gonna have to connect on the yellow belt like it was. 
weer a steel. Steel is gonna come like so. This is a temporary crappy setup if I ever saw one. Alright, here we have iron and steel. I have a feeling I should at least make some space. Okay, so we're not gonna need water from the top anymore, ever. So this is, this could later be sulfuric acid. Uh, it's not that hard to get it out of here, I don't think. It could already just be done like so. Yeah, I think we're good like this. Okay, let's, uh, at least let's now go sprint it in there. Oh, thanks for the suggestion. Filter and filter transferring steel. <laughs> yeah, now comes the moment though. Iron on top side, I have to remember. Uh, we are not set up to put iron on the top side though. Or are we? I mean, we could put iron on the top side like so. Still need to put steel on the bottom side though. That could be done like so. Don't really like that though. That could be done like so. That looks not nice. Okay, let's worry later about how exactly everything looks. And for now, we just get things done. That sounds like a good plan. Can, I can worry a little bit about it, like so. Uh, at least it looks like it's coming from somewhere. Okay, let's see if it actually is working. Incredible! First try too. I always in my videos uh, say, uh, oh yeah, or first try. I definitely did not attempt this like six times, which I usually need to do before I switch on a big, uh, a big spaghetti mess for the first time while just theorizing everything. It never works the first time. But looks like this time it does. I do want to limit this chest though, definitely. Okay, let's just put some pipes in there, I have too many on me anyway. Oh, we're already making engines, look at that! Alright. So this is how it's looking, this is what I was talking about with the... You can get away with two belts if you just use assemblers on one side. Red chips and engines are pretty similar in terms of ingredients needed and outputs like the qu like the um, quantities i mean so this could be a one belt wide setup it's only six tiles pretty nice for a mod like warptorio now we just need to worry how to draw everything off the belt later on uh, we need to fill in all these inserters And the nice thing is, engines are 100% iron, not a copper plate is used in any ingredient to make uh, engines. Which means, it doesn't matter that there's uh, no copper world. Copper is missing. Who cares? I kinda do want to put some engines in a chest. Yes, I'm just gonna go like so. I need more iron on me. Ah, now this doesn't work. Wait. This was exactly like planned, right? <laughs> it's gonna go like so. Turn that around. 
splitter. Priority output to science, I guess. And we're just gonna stash engines in here. And I guess we're gonna stash a lot of engine in here. Anyway, let's just keep that. I don't know how many. Let's do half a chest. Now we got this belt coming back. It has to connect to here. Can just come back like so. That does seem to make the most sense. Alright, I lied. Now my engine's setup is seven belts wide, but only because I have to bring it this way. I think technically we could weave it under this belt even, just to bring it back. Should I do that? It is a uh, pretty expensive though with those fast underground belts, but we do seem to have space for that. We could bring it back like so with red belts. Like so. And just use yellow. It does look kind of funny, doesn't it? I think we're gonna go for that. And then we may be able to build something here still. Now there is no space, but there could be space for something. If we do that, so it may be functional. Let's do that. Anyway, we need to grab a bunch of stuff. Like... Not gears. Actually, yeah, we do need gears. If we want to make those underground bells, they take 40 iron gears a pop. Which is why they are so expensive. Um, we do need a whole bunch of iron plates. Probably take a look outside. The 25 is still good. Okay, we're pretty close to actual blue signs. As long as the next world has copper, we'll have blue signs. Uh, not really intentional that... Uh, that we didn't have copper on this world. <laughs> oh wait. I guess chat said already that I messed this up. Alright, um, the problem is once you start at underground belt weaving, you cannot really stop easily. And I may have tied myself into a Gordian knot down here and trying to get the engines out again. That does not look quite possible. It is exactly at the right tile though. I, yeah, I think I can get away with it. I think I can get away with it. Let's give it a try at least. We can even just... Uh, we don't need more vertical space either. All the engines are on that side, so we can just do it like so. So I guess we're gonna have these. Everywhere where the yellow splitters are. Like so. The red ones bring it back. It is a little bit visually less clear what's going on though. Oh, we, we can even just belt it out. I thought I would need another splitter, but I don't. Nice. <laughs> I do have some copper, maybe I want to make some batteries at least. Nah, uh, there's no sense. Let's, let's do it properly. Alright, six style engines set up, including transporting the engines back to the labs. That is pretty decent. I'm kinda surprised. Let's save.
surprise save. We, ah yeah, we should save on the start of every warp zone, I excused myself earlier on. <laughs> uh, like uh, engines, sex style, pretty neat setup. You can sense I'm quite proud of this, uh, <laughs> this thing. <laughs> we can exactly not get away with that once more, so that's, that's a shame. But we theoretically, no, we need the uh, space for these bells. I guess we didn't need to do it like this, but it looks nice. Yeah, that's pretty sick. But, uh, I do that all the time. The, the uh, mess up the side of the priority. Sometimes for hours on ends. Now we just need to hook up the copper belt. I guess after yet another split off, we should be able to... I don't really know what I'm doing here. Yeah, this looks better. Now this copper has to connect to there. That still works. We have to connect the science output belt to here. And that could be blue science. Now we just need to fill in this. And then it's probably time to start thinking about warping out. Not only for the biters, but just because we need copper. We just need copper to get the resources we need. The funny thing about this setup is once this part is built, you can just weave the rest of the inserters over all the available places. That should be blue signs, if we had copper. Can we just pretend we have copper? Maybe we can just pretend we have some copper. We can just pretend we have some red chips. Let's pretend we have some red chips over here. Alright, one moment. Hmm? Wait, how'd it go? Alright. I guess we should use like, uh, this is a temporary, temporary thing. We are making the first blue signs with, okay, let's, uh, let's stop this red chip belt over here. Because only the first three assemblers have the war beacons influence. So we get a total of 16% productivity bonus on these guys. Whereas these guys only have 8% productivity bonus. Look on the right side, the mouse over. 16, 8, 16, 8. All right, so that's, that's like if you have assemblers mark 3, the yellow ones, with 4 module slots. Basically we now have 4 module slots with productivity modules in here, thanks to this war beacon. First blue signs, we did it. 
15 hours and 16 minutes. Let's do another save. First blue science. Okay, let's see how long did it take. Where did I end up last time? I think I ended up here. 12.54. About two and a half hours extra before we had this set up. Probably good that I cut short the last stream because this was a, a lot more work than I imagined. It does quite neatly fit in this corner though, like this. And as predicted, yeah, the red, green and military science setup is over here. And this entire corner plus these engines over here is the blue science setup. Quite sizable. I wonder how the rest is going to fit. Alright guys, I will have a break after about 40 minutes because my wife just informed me she's baking apple pie. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, uh, I cannot... Uh, I, how I wish to stay with you guys after 40 minutes, it's just like duty calls, you know, you, you need uh, to do it. And uh, there's just no, uh, there's just no getting away from that. <laughs> In 40 minutes. I don't need, what do you think, I don't need 40 minutes to eat a piece of apple pie. <laughs> it will take even less time to, than... Um, something else <laughs> right uh, I guess you are here for Factorio not for slightly inappropriate remarks <laughs> okay blue signs we should be warping out because we need copper that is uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean if I'm if I won't go eat apple pie, I will be playing Ultimate Dead World Rampant in real life. My wife is trying to eavesdrop on me through a closed window, so I opened it for her, so you can actually hear what I'm saying. <laughs> right. Small glimpses in the private life, unavoidable, I guess, when you start to do the streaming stuff. We are here for everything. I don't have the face cam just yet, so at least I still have some sense of anin, anin, ano, anonymity. Anonymity, right? Yeah. Alright, we don't really have anything else to do on this planet. We're getting uh, severe attacks on our outpost because the war platform's pollution cloud is kind of engulfing our thing over here. We are getting damaged even. Oh yeah, we need to deconstruct the stone mine, so I've kind of forgot about that. Stone chest pretty near full, 28k. Okay, yeah, so let's go deconstruct, I guess. Everything is ready, right, for blue signs. It's even automated through here. Limited. I guess I investigated that this is going to output on the bottom side. It is, okay. Alright. So once we are back... Is the water pump still up? No, the water, uh, the pipe has been destroyed long ago. Let's go pick up that water pump. Man, the lag. Do you mind if I just... Yeah, you mind, do you? Yeah, I think they mind. Right, maybe I don't really need that water pump. I, I think I could live without that water pump. As long as I get my apple pie. Alright. <laughs> Let's get rid of this. Should I make... No, I don't need a blueprint for this. Who needs a blueprint for something like this? Oh, that improved warp XP is so nice. Zip. It's 
almost as even faster than an editor mode, I think. Or at least something similar. Yeah, am I gonna walk back? I think I'm gonna walk back. Just have to make sure I don't deconstruct these gun turrets at, a, at an inopportune moment. That could be dangerous. Right, all of that. Alright, I guess we can do the preparation this time before warping out so that we can just enjoy the science set up on the new world. So how much coal is there in here now? 24k still. What actually didn't cut out that early? This is entirely full. Is there still something left in here? Yeah. Still 260k left in here as well. Oh my, actually my entire chests here are full. So I haven't been mining iron for quite a while already. Yeah, there's still 41 coal in these. Oops. So most of our double iron mining hasn't really been double iron mining. Now I have to empty out these furnaces or these uh, uh, furnaces before I can actually before I can actually use it for copper. Probably should have upgraded those to steel chests. But now we're gonna use it all, so I think the iron supply is gonna dwindle very fast. Should have upgraded this belt, that would have helped a bit. I'll just uh, draw empty these a bit. Okay, I guess let's bring the rest of the coal back up here. Okay, coal has been fed. I think I just will manually try to empty this. All of these are filled again. This is filled. Our steel. Steel is excellent. We have two full iron chests. That is over 6k, 7k. Yeah, pretty decent. So how much would it cost me to upgrade these chests? 36 times... Eight. That's not that much, really. I wonder. Uh, I guess 72 times 8. That's a little bit more, but... Yeah, it shouldn't be such a... Cheap skate, I guess. Again, this is a bit too late, but oh well. At least it's done now. Let's upgrade this to red belts. I can't, don't really have the space to do much about it. Once we get uh, one more upgrade of this floor, then we can do it properly. We can also connect these two and then we can better balance that out. I'm never gonna be mining never gonna be mining double copper I don't think. A double iron, yeah we need the extra speed upgrade. All 
Alright, so I guess that is... That is sufficient. Okay, we get rid of this. Did we find some crappy loot and loot chests, which we don't need on us? I think we're actually good. It is big biter time. We are exactly in time. My inventory is a little fuller than I would like to. Don't need to have that much iron on me. Okay, we need to bring some iron up to the... To the ammo as well. Probably the last time. I think I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this space, this very space here to automate ammo, I think. Let's look. 1.4k ammo remaining. We're actually quite low on ammo. Sprite count, I guess. Wait, I forgot uh, which one it was. Detailed info. Again, 80k sprites on screen. About the same. Makes sense, I guess. There are plenty of big biters now. Can we see the spike again in the ammo usage? Magazine. Not quite yet. We've been warping out timely for the last few warp zones, except this one. Right, let's save here. I'm gonna warp out on this one, I think. Wait, I'll first uh, collect my inventory again from the bottom. I have plenty of magazines on me, actually. In my inventory. We get rid of some of these stacks. It's a, a, lit a little bit too much. Right, 600 ammo in every chest. Let's just watch this for uh, a minute or two. Pour oh, myself the last coffee from my cup. I guess I'll need a new one for the apple pie. I can't stop thinking about apple pie now, guys. Okay, let's rechat and see what all what stuff I did wrong. Should be red belt on top of buffer. I already lost the... Uh... Did I do that or did I still not do that? I like the mysterious voice. Yeah, I, I, I'm not in a... You need like a, have a, a fixed setup with a green screen and everything to be able to do the face, face cam. I don't quite have that... Uh, I cannot really set it up in a fixed location. <laughs> well, Moluxia, enjoy your apple pie as well. Oh. Oh, oh, I read it that she was going to make you some. Come on, girlfriend of Maluxia. Make him some apple pie. Make it yourself. Emancipation, bro. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah, I, I think the, the green screen uh, without... So the, your face overlays without background is... Uh, that's pretty nice. Else it just will take up a big rectangular square, which is kind of contrasting too much to the 
to the gameplay, I think. Right, we're holding our own against big biters. Until we run out of ammo. Use glasses like Clark Kent. Plenty pie pause plan. Wives are the real people in charge of families. I'm not going to publicly agree with that statement, but we all know how the fork fits the... <laughs> this is a Dutch proverb, I don't know the English proverb for this. How the fork fits the handle. <laughs> Starting stream, I usually go for the cheap way, just by random green clot. I think I, I would do my, um, my supporters uh, a disservice if I would just go the cheap way for that. I think I have, I, I long surpassed the level of support to, uh, so that I can invest in proper stuff to at least uh, invest back the money that comes to. Uh, provide a better experience. I'm in the market for a new laptop. My current laptop is uh, dying. It did me well for two years until i5 uh, dedicated the video card inside of the laptop. This stream is, uh, be is done on this laptop but it starts to die off now. The Wi-Fi adapter is uh, dead so I'm USB tethering internet connection from my phone already for since I started streaming really and uh, I've already had two blue screens of that so didn't lose any work it started up again but yeah it starts to get scary and it would be nice to get another upgrade because after I'm like 10 minutes into the video editing process uh, every action starts to take progressively more time up to the time that you are like waiting 6 to 15 seconds for a single action to be processed so that that takes up all those little bits of time take up uh, makes for a lot of wasted time in the end pop up green screen and simulate green screen with OBS why not go for desktop because I'm often in a sort of a mobile setup I'm only actually inside the, an apartment for about, I guess, half of the year. And the rest of the time I'm on the way for various reasons. Red ammo for turrets not worth it. Well, as long as you can comfortably out damage the highest biter's armor, which is 8 armor in this case. Uh, yellow ammo is just way cheaper than red ammo and we're doing 21 damage so that is off the armor of the big biter we're still doing good damage to that guy and red ammo is just 60% more raw damage for about three times the cost so it would cost basically at least twice the resources uh, to get rid of uh, the biters if we were using red ammo which is why we're sticking to yellow Especially uh, with a mod like Warptorio that is very important because the ammo cost to defend your base is way way larger than in any vanilla sort of setting. And the, Im the impact is significant. Like now, let's check our magazine consumption. Magazine. Right, we're in the big bite area where we're using 450 magazines a minute. That is two yellow belts of iron worth of production of uh, just into the red ammo we are spent into the yellow ammo we are spending right now which is our full production if we are double mining if we are double mining iron that is our full iron production converted into ammo if it was red ammo we would need like double that amount which we cannot even generate so that's the reason why we are still sticking with yellow ammo 
The flamethrowers do are doing a lot of damage though. In hindsight, I probably should have built them a little further to the front. Then probably the turrets would have to do... The gun turrets would have to do less work. But the flamethrowers are... While pretty strong, they are not like end game level of strong yet. You need the upgrades for them to effectively kill big biters and... Uh, the high hit point guys to kill them fast. So, but they are still, they are doing uh, lots of the damage and every damage done by flamethrowers means less ammo spent on killing the biters. It makes a significant difference. Laptops are not really a way to go. I know, the only game I'm playing re really is F Factorio. The export times of the videos are acceptable, except for the very long ones. Those I usually do overnight. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for a good laptop. I've been looking at the external GPU option. Not really for playing Factorio, it's more for uh, the editing, which is uh, a lot heavier than the super optimized game of Factorio. It does reveal more of the game too. Ah, like that, yeah. No, no, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I, it's okay. I can, I can uh, justify spending uh, whatever is needed to uh, on the on the YouTube and on the streaming and stuff. By this time, I've been I've been getting good levels of support since since the Ultimate Death World Challenge, really, which aired in mid 2020, I think. 2021 maybe, 2021 maybe. I forgot, 2022. And, and, anyway, over a year at least. A year and a half perhaps already, so... I think I'm... Uh, I feel kind of... It would feel not good to not at least spend a, a large portion of that money to... try to upgrade the, the gear and equipment so I can... focus more on producing videos and stuff. Anyway... We are still surviving, I thought it would go down quite fast. So I'm gonna reload, I don't want to spend all this iron. There's only 300 iron left in the chest, so we're gonna die pretty soon now. Yeah, there is a mod that makes corpses disappear faster. But I tried it already. I switched it off. I forgot to switch it on for this playthrough again. It also messes with the dead animations somehow. They just uh, don't have animations anymore, they just... Plop down. I don't know if that's a bug or a setting. I didn't really spend too much time into it since for my other playthrough I didn't uh, really need it. And then I forgot to switch it on for this one again, so yeah. Not great. I think uh, the belt is empty now. Uh, the belt is just about empty. As soon as the gun turrets run out, we are done for. We still have the nuclear reactor on here with a thousand degrees. Alright, so I cannot really be... ...be here myself. Because the biters will just uh, focus me. You see, in small case... I know, it's already just setting up for, basically for, for editing work, for uh, voice recording and for streaming. It's already, it's, it's, it's a decent amount of work now with the laptop, but it's still acceptable. But I think if it would go like portable desktop, it would become 
much harder to uh, set it up and tear it down every time I would uh, need to. Too much time goes into, <laughs> I guess, commuting, you could call it, like <laughs> getting the stuff set up. I think uh, there's a streamer called Colonel Will, which is doing that uh, mod. He's doing like the 2.0 mod experience on on this uh, on Factorio 1.1, basically. Let's switch on FPS. We're down to 24 now. Still only 84,000 sprites. I guess at some point, um, also the immense biter parting from the entire pollution cloud, which is which has grown to this size by now. This is the entire pollution cloud. There's just so many biters parting on the way to the base everywhere that. Uh, That's, that's gonna take a lot of calculations as well. Like in editor mode you can zoom out much further, look at this. <laughs> Somehow now I'm at 43 FPS. Maybe the, the, draw, the sprite drawings are ignored for a large part, if you zoom out far, I don't know. Is that so? No, 160,000 sprites. Alright, so why do I get better FPS when I'm zoomed out like this than when I'm zoomed in like this? Maybe the level of detail changes, I don't know. Oh, we are auto-warping. No! 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 <laughs> the biters are not gonna make it. Oh, we have 10 minutes on the clock. Alright, the biters are gonna make it. <laughs> Rip. Look at that, man. <laughs> There is a lot of biters coming in from all directions. You can kind of see the patterns, how they come on the chunk borders, right? Something you may not have known is they cross diagonal into chunks and often follow chunk borders like so. I guess I should not miss this moment since the biters are basically gonna penetrate the base now. Yeah, maybe fewer pixels to draw. I know if sprites just work, uh, sprites work with pixels, right? And not with vector drawings and stuff, which go infinitely deep. Roasted biter? If it tastes like chicken? Probably not if you roast them like this. I think they will taste more like charcoal. Now we're getting in trouble. It takes some time for them to break through the walls. They are starting to destroy gun turrets. This corner has entirely been taken out already. Big biter corps in the base. Here as well, they're inside now. Inside our walls. Oh no, oh no, what the heck? Let me out. <laughs> I hate it, you can actually 
one up two of those things in editor mode. Wait, I won't move anymore. I should have done this for the break, right? I'm an idiot. I guess the apple pie is almost ready. No, I'm not on break yet. My, the wife is baking apple pie. I went off on a tangent talking about stuff. I just wanted to see uh, how it would go now. And I, we had a sort of a talk and uh, questions and uh, ideas from chat and stuff. So I just left the screen on, but this is usually my break screen. I just go away, leave this on. And you can bet on if the biters will destroy my base before I'm back or not. <laughs> Alright, the big biter is beyond beyond the lines of uh, the flamethrower now. The first one over here. This is our last stand, man. This biter died as well. Got one over here now, though. I don't think I'll make it for another five minutes. Well, at least we aren't spending that much ammo anymore. <laughs> Basically the biters are focusing the military targets down first, which means the gun turrets. And by attacking the gun turrets, they are still exactly in range of the flamethrower. So until the gun turrets get destroyed, they won't really try to penetrate the center. Right? Sink. This guy is attacking the flamethrower right now though. This side is entirely taken out. Maybe we'll make it. The oil usage is like nothing. Look, this tank is still full. Oil is still being pumped in. Flamethrowers uh, use like three oil a second when they fire. We have we had, I should say, 16 flamethrowers. There it goes. <laughs> we had 16 flamethrowers, so there's maximum like 48 oil a second. Okay, here we go. We didn't make it. Four minutes, 20 left. Oh. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Look at that. That is a battlefield. <laughs> Biters don't know what they need to do anymore. Everything has been destroyed by the nuclear explosion. Now they'll just start despawning and stuff. Overlay is frozen. Chat 2 fixed. They will continue to come because we have stuff underground where they cannot get to. I wish there was like a tech to make this usable for... ...for biters. We can make it destructible, then they will attack it, but we cannot... Uh, 
You cannot easily set this for the biters to use it, I don't think. At least I don't know how to do that. A change force, maybe. Change force to enemy, can I do that? Okay, no biters in the base just yet. Okay, they are just despawning, they are not teleporting. But he's trying to walk in, yeah, no, they cannot use the teleport, even if we try to set it to enemy. Alright. Alright, see you, Macha. I guess we are going to warp back out. 14 minutes before we get... 20 minutes before we get destroyed. Everything still looks under control. In this safe. I was ready to warp out, right? Or did I still... I think I just can manually retract the miners. And I don't need to do that next warp zone. And at the start of the next warp zone we are going to have blue signs and then things are going to go rapid or at least technology wise okay i guess we can also take the time to properly refill the gun turrets just go up here grab back most of the ammo which we just refilled in there does not make much sense i know <laughs> this order of things Fifty magazines. Maybe we can get away with fifty magazines. Uh, no, man, these things are near destroyed. I don't want to lose fifty magazines if the gun turrets get destroyed. Let's go twenty-five. Once we have proper red ammo going, we can probably maybe upgrade to red ammo for these uh, mining platforms, which don't have the flamethrower support. They are not gonna. They are not going to be spending that much ammo, usually. How much red ammo do we have already? 400, okay, that's not enough to fill those turrets. Okay, just taking the time to properly prepare some stuff before we are distracted again by uh, all the new opportunities unlocked by blue signs. That is definitely going to... <laughs> distract me from anything I should be taking into account alright that is this cleaned up we did the coal already or did we coal is already down again I guess I should not really be wasting too much time anymore since the attacks are quite heavy 60% devolution already, yeah we should be getting out. This is a definite sign we should be getting out. Alright, everything is neatly prepared for blue signs now. Upon warping out, everything shall be nice and dandy. Actual Z save. 
double Z. Really warping out this time safe. <laughs> Click the button. I don't really see the need to pipe it out to the platform. Usually you cannot place the mining platforms close by anyway because the ore patches are in the field of flames. So you you just will be uh, flaming your miner, your miners. So here it is far enough away, but on most planets, on many planets, it is too close by, especially when your platform starts to grow. We have a dwarf planet. Do I take that? I guess I take that. It is an easy planet again, though. <sighs> Do we want the easy planet? And it, will, it will be hard to find resources, including the copper we want. At least we will have copper on this planet, so that is good. Go with fate. Easy planet, lots of research. I mean, yeah, like here, the, the copper patch is literally under the platform by now. I think laser... I, laser. <laughs> Mix of thoughts and words. Later I will probably upgrade the mining platforms with laser turrets. Once we have nuclear power, then we can easily afford the power. Like, nuclear power is to... Uh, is to um, basically doesn't consume any resources. It's like the flamethrowers of power. Extremely powerful and doesn't cost a thing. Alright. I guess we are kind of off on a quest then. So we definitely need copper. And... Whoa. That was a good timing of that uh, error of that uh, destroyed site. Thanks for uh, thanks for the bits, man. Yeah, a big thing about making unique designs is not looking up how other people do it and just trying to come up with yourself uh, with stuff yourself and then often you'll make something much worse or inefficient but sometimes you create like a, a hidden a hidden gem and if you do it often enough you collect enough of of that knowledge uh, and you so that you can start to make designs which which are different than most other people do it, but which still works as well or even better for some sp specific uh, purposes. So yeah, but basically what I'm saying is don't watch my videos, right? <laughs> Very smart. Oh, I missed a loot chest. Is there important stuff in there? No. Steam engines. No, I'm not going to clutter up my inventory with steam engines. I'm already cluttering it up enough as this. Too, ma too much forest on this planet. <laughs> Alright, we haven't found a single resource just yet except this very poor oil patch. So that does not. It is not a good uh, 
Also, it's the disadvantage of dwarf planets, it takes forever to find resources. Let's put on the chunk grid. So I can strategically drive uh, and explore exactly one more chunk than we need. Let's see, can we take that down for the iron? This is big worms though. No, we cannot. We cannot use the same trick because these, there are too many big worms. They will obliterate the gun turrets before uh, they kill everything. Big worms have 10 armor, so they they can take quite a beating. And they have like 750 hit points, I think. And there were a lot of them. So peaceful and quiet. Nice gentle music. Is this behemoth worms already? No, still big worms. So I think the resource distribution on dwarf planets is something like... Um, one third. One third of the frequency and about one third of the size as well. Size doesn't really matter that much because anyway we have only one mining platform. It's going to be rich enough to last uh, the entire uh, time you have on the warp zone anyway. Yeah, 750 hell those guys have. I haven't. I have only found a single iron patch. Is that some? That is iron. Right, we found iron. That is good. The right harvester can be placed on iron. Right, so that is going, going in. We have space in the chests again thanks to the steel chest upgrade. This is kind of a dead end. Let's explore around anyway though. We are getting a bit too far out. Even though biter bases are also like... I forgot the exact numbers but approximately one third of the frequency and size. The further out you go, the more frequent they will be. And the more, the higher the chance the resource patch will actually be covered in biters like the first one we found. We do find uranium here, but we are not yet in a position to actually mine it. Stone. We also will have enough stone for a while. We, d we are finding the resource patches, it's just not the one we need. We need copper. Let's pop in this chunk. No, no copper there either. Right, so I guess we're going further south. You can indeed with the tank just drive through the forest, but the tank also only has like half the speed of the car. So I doubt it would be much faster. And not unimportant, it's a blue science technology, which is what we are trying to unlock by finding a copper patch at the moment. <laughs> Can you imagine everything set up for blue signs and what we are lacking is just a copper patch to mine. Here's a chest in the water. Uh, it's pretty decent. Um, uh, 100 steel. Okay, let's go for that. I still have some spots of landfill. Uh, 
And red underground belts are also quite expensive. Oh, I grabbed some fish. That was not the intention. This is a fishless playthrough. I think. I think I didn't use fish to heal. Yeah, these kinds of facts can... Basically uh, mix in a bit. 80 landfill. We're going to pick that up as well. Hopefully find some copper in the process. In my YouTube page where I've had a lot of luck when I went to pick up a loot chest, that action would reveal the the resource patch I was looking for. So now I'm kind of biased by those uh, random results. We've got a biter nest over here. We're sandwiched between biters and water. Oh, there is copper. Is it free of biters though? Yes, it is. Alright. That means we are ready for blue signs. And we are done outside here. An advantage is there's gonna be, well, <laughs> less biter bases right around the resource patches as well because they are less frequent. Here is kind of true, there's not going to be a lot of attacks here, the, there's quite a big space for pollution, including the forests over here and stuff. Here though it's a little bit more close by, so we'll see how that goes. I think uh, this will mean these are automatically changing over to copper now. This is going to mean we have uh, blue signs now. Let me find myself a vantage point for the break. This basically shows the entire factory like so. Alright. This is going to be the break point. I'm going to reload this point later. So if you want to take a break as well. Uh, this is going to be a good time. Break time. I'm just going to uh, research a bunch of expensive blue technologies so that something is happening in the base. Like mining productivity too. Not the ones I would actually want to research first. See some damage upgrades. Those could be good as well. Ah, we could actually do... Yeah, let's do... Let's select a military science first, and only then we do the blue ones. Blue one, this one is pretty expensive. This is expensive, this is expensive. Here is the damage upgrade, okay that will, that will do. We'll see if this completes, hopefully. Hopefully blue science will work without doing anything and you can enjoy the at sort of a non-time lapse, time lapse of the base. Uh, so I'm going to take a break, going to eat my apple pie. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I love you guys, but not as much as apple pie. So <laughs> I hope to see you after the break. It's gonna take about, I guess about half an hour, 20 minutes, half hour. I don't know, we'll see. See you, uh, see you after the break.
All right. I'm kind of back, not really yet. Still need to make coffee. Is the blue science base working? I haven't looked yet. Let's take a quick glimpse. Oh, it looks like the lab's erect, eh? Looks like everything is somehow working. Oh, zoom. Power is good. Quite a maze that is actually working. I thought you would be looking at a rotated belt for half an hour while I was gone, but apparently everything is fine. <laughs> a miss rotated belt or something. Yeah, I should have. I should. Have, I should probably make a break screen. I take my streams one small improvement at a time. For this stream, I have had this improvement because I messed up my sounds instead of improving something. I tried to improve something, but something went wrong somewhere along the line. I guess that's the advantage of streaming from a camper van. My work office is also the kitchen, so I can make coffee right here. The disadvantage is the kitchen and work office is also my wife's, my wife's living room. <laughs> Not at the moment, but when we're truly on the road. like that. Every advantage comes with a disadvantage and the other way around. I'm not even sure you can hear me because I'm like a meter and a half away from the microphone but I'm blabbering on. Nonetheless. Fresh coffee. <laughs> yeah, I I switched off. I, sw I put it on mute, but it was not too loud, so I switched the sound back on. Just some background ASMR. <laughs> I don't I don't even know what ASMR stands for. I'm too old. I, I imagine this could be described as background ASMR if I would just shut up for one moment. But I won't. I still have one piece of apple pie. Oh, it's a good one. Nice lunch. <laughs> and healthy because it has apples. Yeah, streaming from the camper van with mobile data from my phone. Visiting family for a month and a half or so, two months maybe. Wait. 
just three to five minutes and uh, and I should be able to resume streaming. I should have researched the text I actually needed to research instead of this. They're still on mining productivity too, huh? Research is quite slow then. Yeah, it's just the second technology. The first blue one actually. Well, my data plan is only good in my, ho my home country where I bought the SIM card in the Netherlands. I have like unlimited data, which in the practice amounts to 20 gigabytes per day already. But you can unlock more if you want to. But 20 gigabytes actually is uh, as like a 6 to 7 hour stream fits within that, so that's pretty decent. I will have to get some local SIM cards though, to be able to stream in other countries as well. Because the... While you theoretically should have uh, Europe-wide unlimited internet, in practice that's not the case. I don't exactly know where uh, it changed. It goes up every year. It's, it's getting better and better. Like five more years and probably everything will be unlimited everywhere. Come on, coffee. Last little bit doesn't want to go through the filter. Grind the beans for too long. Gets too fine, gets clogged up in the filter. Okay, I'll just read back chat a little bit. What did I miss? Living the life. It's like a two-sided sword. It's pretty nice to travel a lot, but it's also... I'm not entirely doing it by free will, you know moving i'm not moving wherever i want to go at whatever time i don't really want to go in details about my living situation because it's quite complicated and personal but uh, yeah i'm not i'm not only going places where i want to go all the time i'm kind of in a situation where i have to keep moving a couple times per year anyway i don't want to get into more detail uh, in public but yeah, in general it's pretty nice, so for the foreseeable future I will be, now I'm visiting family, we will go to Northern Italy for a bit, before moving on to uh, Turkey for two months. And after that it's uh, still unclear. Oh god, chat is unionizing while I was gone. Responsibility falls on chat again. 100% <laughs> increase of zero. Unionized chat sounds terrifying, yes. <laughs> ionize. I would uh, be careful because if you, indeed, if you are going to unionize, I'm going to ionize chat. with my laser turrets. When in doubt, main boss. Main boss is a good base uh, design for... So you're being chased by FBI. No, no, it's nothing, <laughs> nothing like that. That's why I don't want to show my face on camera! <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's nothing like that. Yeah, Starlink, uh, I've been thinking about that. It, mo it could be a decent option. It's not more expensive than... Uh, than spending a full data package of uh, data on a local SIM card in a, in a day, I don't think. Catching hailstones in Italy. Yeah, that was last year a lot. 
we'll see. It, it's not. Uh, it's mostly in summer there when it's uh, the unstable thunderstorm weather um, with the big hailstorms and stuff. In winter, the weather is generally a lot more stable and calm. Man, we're still on mining productivity. Looks like we're not really gonna blast through the text, then. Yeah? Trying to slowly move back in position. all of this without knocking everything over. <laughs> I don't know if I should leave the mic on <laughs> during the breaks. <laughs> Alright. I guess I was gone for 25-ish minutes. I forgot actually when I saved. This is still stuck in a lot of cables. This is this cable is not stuck. That's good. I have a lot of cables now on my my laptop setup. The microphone, the headphones, the mouse USB, the the USB tethering phone. Right. Um, C fifteen forty four. Oh, twenty five minutes. Yeah, about twenty five minutes, and we have researched. Mining productivity almost. And one military science upgrade. So that's like, yeah, 60 second technologies though. So that's gonna be uh, twice as slow like, like say advanced oil processing, which is just 30 seconds per science pack. This, the labs will research twice as fast if they have the science packs, which at the moment they don't. Let's, pre let's predict what the bottleneck will be. Sulfur. Wait, what? Water. Ah, water. Yeah, we didn't uh, connect water just yet. But we, did, uh, we didn't connect water from outside and we are pumping everything into, into the tank. So once I do this, sulfur production should resume, right? Yeah, sulfur is again coming down the belt right now. Okay, so that's a... Uh, that's it. I totally would have uh, pr predicted that, right? You believe me, you know? I'm a pro. <coughs> right. <laughs> Breaking bad in Italy, all right. <laughs> I don't have that, that good of a solar panel set up on the van, uh, but I do have uh, three, uh, three batteries to store like uh, power. I can run off of that for a couple days. But yeah, with a stream, I prefer to be. Uh, I mean, I can get, I can go to like a camping and uh, plug in to charge up the van every two weeks or so. I usually do that. This depends on how much I need to use the laptop, which usually is a lot since all my work depends on the laptop. 
it was like that even when I had the translation job. It was 100% uh, remote, all on the laptop. So basically the thing was on every day, like most of the day. Right, we are continuing. I'm pouring myself the coffee right now. I still have three quarters of a piece of apple pie. So you're going to have to deal with that when I'm doing months of the way for a little bit, but I guess you can you can take it. <laughs> Break time, alright. Ah, we are running on half of blue signs, that is right. So only half of blue signs is active. And they are running on productivity modules, so this would be 45 SPM, so it's only 22 and a half, so probably only 20 SPM. Look at that copper, glorious copper. Flowing down the bells, everything should start up automatically. We are not going to be researching any of those technologies though. I probably should limit this a little. Let's go uh, like so. We're gonna prepare for efficiency modules as well. For the outside miners and the mining platforms, that's gonna save us even more ammo. Because the mining platforms are defended purely with ammo. And here a lot of the damage is done by the flamethrowers. The platforms are far enough away so that the pollution cloud won't catch up, I think. As a result of this being a dwarf planet and resources being sparse. You know, still 1 million iron ore. No way we're gonna mine that. This is gonna run perfectly for the hour we are here. Alright. You know what? Yeah, let's uh, not cut off this belt. 8% productivity bonus, 16% productivity bonus. It's all good. It's all good. Let's not artificially cut off ourselves like that. Do kinda want to have a... A stash of red chips. But for now we output priority signs. Right, we already got the free bonus. Let's just watch this bonus pop into action. It's giving us two and then another two. Once the bonus comes in. Right about now. Right about soon. Right about now. Alright, so those are for free. That is why this beacon and the productivity models are nice to have. Okay, we have a good amount of engines. This is already filled up. Those we can use to make some electric engines to get ourselves some early bots, the power armor and uh, whatnot. For that though, we first have to research some stuff. This is a good setup, man. I like this base. I didn't think I would be able to design A base which would work this well and basically without really planning just on the fly getting it done kind of surprised right uh, i am actually not uh, pumping water i don't think where is water water is down there how is my water situation 1.4 million. My blue science has reached all the laps. Same story, we're not gonna worry about the last little bit of productivity bonus. We're just gonna enable all the laps, all the signs. Wait, those were there for a reason. Let's just have a check around here. Right, so... I 
I guess we're already producing all of the red chips and all of the assemblers as well. Because these uh, have productivity modules in them and these don't. Well, these have two productivity modules, these have four. So these are even slower, 0.6 as opposed to 0.675, which means we can have a little bit of extra production apparently. Belts are backed up here, belts are backed up there. Is everything working? All the assemblers are working. This one is not working. We are missing an output inserter here. Or okay, just a quick. Let's do a quick check. I'm just ma mostly checking the products completed. If that is a high number, like 1141 here, then everything is probably working as it should be. 26. All of these have a bunch of completed products as well. Sulfur working good. Sulfur working good. Right, we are collecting. We have collected underground pipes already. All of them. So the rest is going in here. Let's limit this chest as well a bit. We could do another chest of iron gears here as well. Or just similar to what we've been doing here. So we can grab those for to make red underground belts and whatnot. We need tons of those uh, at some points in the game. My right, blue signs is backing up. Uh, I think I just will connect the water. It is fairly easy to do on this planet. Attacks are not going to be that large. I can disable the flamethrowers, basically. Okay, this going out here. Disconnected, disconnected. So technically, I can rely on ammo since... We won't get that many attacks here. They are coming from that angle though, which is kinda meh. Well, let's just do it and see how long it holds up for. That is probably not gonna go too well. Yeah guys, I have a heavy armor man, you can chew on me all you want, it's not gonna do much. Let's repair this, uh, this one here as well. Small biters against heavy armor. Easy game. Wait. Ah, I grabbed all the ammo from these chests. Let's put that back then. I thought I had filled this with iron, but I may have filled it with iron, but I also... Let's have a little bit on us as well. Okay, so I guess let's go and grab some iron to refill this. And I guess then it's time to switch on the science. All of this was completely empty. Right, so that's gonna produce. Random stuff everywhere. Right, one of the things I could do, just real quick, is to make solid fuel. Uh, what that will do is, 
uh, we can drive a little bit faster with uh, the car. This is a top speed of 105% and a vehicle acceleration of 120% compared to coal, which is just coal. Just, so 100%. This is gonna help a bit with uh, driving around. I'm just gonna make one stack of it and then deconstruct this again. Alright, looks like we are producing more red chips than that we need for blue signs. All of blue signs is working. All of the engines are working. Okay, I guess we can also... How is copper doing? Copper is increasing as well. We are mining more copper than we are using. Iron, I guess, we still have bunch tons. Metric bunch tons of iron. Of course, equal to one and a half imperial bunch tons. Right. That means I guess we can start up batteries. Let's give it 2k, then we can make 2000 batteries. Alright, that is batteries. We're gonna need more for sulfuric acid as well. Looks like we're not gonna draw the bell there. Would we even? Eh, not easily. Maybe later once the hallways are wider. I didn't think of this. But... Sulfuric acid uh, only requires one iron plate to make 50 sulfuric acid. So for every battery we make, we need only 0.4 iron plates extra here. So that's going to be more than plenty, it's going to fill up these tanks as well I think. Let's just uh, complete, we have the iron, let's just completely fill up the chest. And we don't need to think about it anymore until we have like requester chests probably. Okay, so far so good. Let's research. Okay, what do we want? Now it's gonna be important. Okay, let's see which tags are important. We'll just plop them down here. Advanced oil is quite important because that allows you to get already, you get 55 petroleum gas out of 100 oil instead of 45, plus you get uh, like 70 heavy and light oil for free on top of that, which you can crack down into petroleum gas as well. This is more than twice as efficient as basic oil processing. So basically a 100% mining productivity bonus on your oil. Advanced oil processing is, is, it is the most popular first blue technology for a reason. And it's very rarely a mistake to get advanced oil up earlier rather than later. Unless you play with like really rich oil settings, then it doesn't really matter to waste the oil. But we don't, we have uh, a fixed number of tanks in the basement with oil, so we want to make the most out of it. Just like we have been trying to make the most out of every resource we have for all the game already. Like we switched to steel furnaces as early as possible. Uh, that kind of stuff. We did efficiency modules in the beacon when we were low on coal, that kind of stuff. There's more mining productivity, which is not really gonna help us that much because so far we only have yellow belts of iron and copper incoming. It only would help us a little if we would either build like ore buffer chests, which I don't plan to do. I have plate buffer chests instead. So mining production can wait. What else do we have? Laser turrets can wait. This can wait. Eventually we want some upgrades to the floor sizes. And more toolbar uranium processing. That could be an early-ish one. I want to switch to nuclear power as soon as possible. 
and not in the least because you can find all four of these elements in loot chests, believe it or not. Even the actual nuclear plants, which cost a metric ton of resources, which of course is equal to 1.375 imperial tons. Yeah, but that is, those are big finds, man, nucle the nuclear reactors. I mean, these are still easily craftable. Still expensive, but not like stupid expensive. But these things, I'm gonna make a point of it. To find all the nuclear reactors I built, I'm gonna find them in loot chests. I refuse to make them myself. That's a promise. <laughs> We're gonna go loot chest hunting and find those things as soon as we have the technology researched. So I guess, yeah, that is that could be an early tag as well. Well, factory floor 4 will increase the size of the square on our factory floor. This could be important electric smelting, but we need space for that. No, those were, I forgot already what I said, but those are some different kind of uh, tons. I thought that those were bunch tons, metric bunch tons. That is one and a half imperial bunch ton. Okay, lab research speed actually <laughs> seems like a good thing to get since we spent the whole break researching mining productivity slowly in these 20 labs. Blue chips unlocks the power armor which unlocks efficient use of uh, bots. Lubricant towards bot frames. We have so many good options man. This one is extremely important as well. Boiler well, extremely important. This one is extremely convenient as well, I should say. Warp boiler floor water, which warps a small amount of water into the actual boiler floor. Alright, I think we are going to do that first. Let's do advanced oil processing so we can switch. And then we'll do boiler floor water. Also, of course, I've been researching this one every time. Another 10 minutes to the warp timer, not that valuable, but you can also completely switch off the warp timer. This uh, level 6 um, spawns the physical warp reactor, which will replace the nuclear reactor we have now on top, and disable the auto warp timer. So then, if you have disabled the auto warp timer, and you spawn to a, a biteless planet, you can really take literally all the time in the world to design your base in peace, so not a bad thing to do. Right, but first, yeah, let's go advanced oil. I guess we are gonna set it up as well, or we won't be able to use advanced oil. Meanwhile, these things can uh, produce... We can make our first 100 efficiency modules. For the miners. Let's see, I forgot how many miners we have on each platform. 16, right? So that's 48 modules and then we will not produce 160 pollution a minute. But only 32. Basically, the amount that three miners are producing right now is what's going to be produced by the entire platform, which will quite limit the spread of the pollution cloud and limit the attacks on the actual platform, which makes it viable to stay longer, I guess. Because uh, these things are way less uh, good defended against big biters than the actual war platform with the flamethrowers. Alright, advanced oil processing is already complete. I think I should pop lubricant in there before doing the water. So that technology costs 1000 red and green signs. We need two packs a pop. Only one blue though. 500 in total. I'm gonna try to be on this boiler floor. When the, when the technology completes. Yeah, War Beacon 3 is also... Man, there are so many high priority technologies to go for. Right, 50 solid fuel. Advanced oil processing is in.
Let's just switch. Okay, now I'm gonna need those extra pipes, which we'll stash here. Let's grab all of them. Now we don't have actual pipes. Let's set it up so that we always have some actual pipes. We have enough engines produced anyway, I think. Yeah, 1k pipes might be... Yeah, it's gonna be too much. Let's do, let's do 200 or so. Or else we will stall engine production, which will stall science production. Uh, gears can all be taken out. We have gears up there as well, where uh, red and green signs is. <laughs> this is kind of cursed. I know some people put petroleum gas on the inside. I like to put it on the outside, but down the middle, that should not be allowed. Alright, so I want to make lubricant. I guess somewhere over here. Where am I going to make electric engines do? You know, the thing, we need electric engines for bot frames and as soon as we have bots, we can also pretty soon have a logistics network, right? So maybe I'll do, I'll do this with barrels, lubricant with barrels. To request a chest. That means we need a bunch of barrels. Because here, I don't know, maybe I can still snake a pipe through, but I'm not even sure where I'm gonna build all that stuff yet, so let's just do it with barrels. Incorrect condition on pipe assembler. Nobody is gonna mention it. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. That would uh, basically, as soon as there's pipes in the chest, it will block tanks. <laughs> it is not the first time that something like that, that happened to me, so... <laughs> Alright, we're gonna need like a temporary barrel assembler to produce the barrels initially. But once we have them, we can reuse them every time. I don't want to go for a full chest, let's do a half chest, which is 240. That means 240 steel. can fill that. Ah wait, no, this is... <laughs> yeah, no, that is not how this uh, works, uh, Mr. Hendrix. Uh... <laughs> we need actually, we need a assembler to fill the barrels, which means this Probably would have been better off like turned like such. It's a little bit wasteful, but I guess we'll do this instead. Let's not select the recipe just yet. We'll just directly connect this to a assembler which fills lubricant barrels. Like so. And then we'll have our temporary assembler making the barrels. Like so. And I do not want to do that steel shenanigans again, so let's do this. We'll grab those. Like so. And now we can select lubricant. Now we're gonna be filling these barrels. It's gonna be fast enough for electric engines. It's only used for electric engines and blue belts. Blue belts are not needed for anything. At least not on a consistent basis. Only if you want to 
upgrade the blue belts you need to uh, have a lot of lubricant all right so i guess for now I'm just going to do this. This will be transformed into lubricant. We can set up advanced oil processing uh, later. Before I could walk through here, I'm pretty sure. Uh, let me throw. No, they won't. Oh, the, the pain starts. Let's actually put some of these down here now. I don't know, maybe two. Like this could be one, not really. Yeah, not the best. I don't like the setup already. I think I want to combine this over here somehow. Instead. And then we can do this maybe. Then we can actually connect it. Still no. I guess All right, well, boiler for water is about to be finished and that's going to be enough efficiency modules to put in the miners 84, 85, 86, can I make this? Nice, <laughs> 87, I think I can do the iron mine as well, before it completes. Nice. Alright, so now here is going to spawn little bits of water. While um, as soon as the tank completes, a little bit of water is going to spawn here. We can get rid of our 1.4 million water in the tank here. And all of these tanks. So while that happens, let me re-chat a little bit. <laughs> Why do you think the biters got called biters? Right, it is time. Actual water. Where does it come from? Don't we don't ask those questions around here. It is just here in this underground void. And yeah, pretty misleading uh, name I would say. Warp a small amount of water from the planet to the boiler floor. This is like uh, 10,000 units of water a second, which is like, you can place 8 of these offshore pumps in here. In fact, let me do just that. Connect that instead. And now we can basically just get rid, we can just delete all of this. Hop, it is worthless. Stop pumping. Destroying my big moment. I go and water is gone. We don't need it anymore. Water be gone. We now have infinite water. Not a little amount of water from the planet. A small amount of water. We have infinite water on the boiler floor, man. 
so now we just got it connected to here as well like so for now and then we can pump this water up through here it does not need to go up here anymore This still does need to happen though. So the water now comes from downstairs, from this pump, goes up here, goes further up here, and goes to the oil processing. So that is pretty nice. Alright, actually we are going quite fast through the technologies. Then what is next? I think I just do want to disable that. I do want to disable the auto warp timer. Just uh, maybe we can stay longer on this dwarf planet actually if we do that. Since we've got a pretty decent uh, defense going on, there won't be that many biters to attack. So let's go for that. First, we can research this technology, which is going to be insanely fast, which adds another 10 minutes to the warp timer. So don't miss the moment. Probably the inserters cannot keep up inserting signs. Maybe they can. 10 minutes. 33 minutes left. For the next one though, we need a bunch of other technologies, which gently nudges you in the direction of bots already, because we need robotics, electric engine, and uranium processing, all of the things which we are actually already going for anyway. And then we can research this uh, last one which disables the warp timer and then you can unlock some special abilities some warp warptorio special abilities which are going to be pretty cool we'll get to those later I guess I guess this is going to be our next uh, order of researching things let's see if we can get our first behemoth biter kill on this planet I don't think so though it takes a long time to get behemoths even with the uh, even with the Warptorio pollution pushing. <laughs> Time 1%, spawner kill 0% and pollution 99% driving force behind the evolution factor. That is Warptorio. Your life is pollution. Alright, I think we gotta do some coal refills. These were out. These are probably about to be out. And I saw the stone brick furnaces were also out. These are actually also out. 12k remaining. Can we get nuclear power before we need to mine coal again? I kind of doubt it. If it replaces your nuclear... No, it's not a loss condition. It basically... We can just uh, change that warp reactor up to also be destroyable. And just heat it up to the maximum temperature. And it will function just the same. Two million oil in here. This is still not empty. So we're going, doing good business. I still will need coal for grenades and for plastics. So... How much grenade do I have up here still? Uh, cool. 7k. Another 6k in those four chests. So, yeah, not great. We will need coal eventually anyway. But we won't need to mine it every warp zone anymore. Alright, electric engine is done. Robotics is done. How is the barrels? We do have a bunch of them already. Let's just set up some temporary electric engines, because we need them for the power armor, we need them for bot frames. Alright, electric engines. And then we need 
to empty out barrels. Let's just do it one on one, like so. We have the engines right here. Let's grab four stacks of green chips for that. Alright, let's see. An electric engine requires 15 lubricant. An engine... There's 750 lubricant. A barrel contains 50, so we need 15 barrels per assembler for 50 engines. Perhaps we can insert even more. No, it's not ready yet. Let's go with this amount. We don't have another 60 barrels just yet. I'm already inputting double the amount of uh, engines needed because I want another four stacks of engines soon after this. Alright. So it's only missing lubricant. As soon as I insert... As soon as I insert these barrels in here, it should start working. Alright, the rest of the lubricant gets stored in here. We need five more barrels. That is 750 lubricant, so... A stack, a stack, a stack. And then a half stack, a half stack, and a half stack. Then just grab the barrels. That should, uh, that should make the full stack of electric engines, 60 barrels. So let's go bring these back to be refilled. Later we can do it with bots. Now we are we are the bot. Meanwhile these are done, so let's grab those on the way back up. For the next batch together with the engines. Let's see, can we actually see how much we can store in here? Looks like we already can insert all the barrels at least. Alright, so that is everything we need. We just need to insert these engines. If I had built it one tile further from the edge, I could have set up chests, but oh well. That is going towards uh, the power armor a good deal as well. Power armor is not that far away. Right, it is behind blue chips, I think. Yeah, we need blue chips and then power armor. The power armor requires 20 electric engines. And 40 blue chips. But mostly electric engines. I ran out of plastic. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, because... Um, Alright, let's... Uh, set up at least some... Uh, I didn't set up uh, oil cracking just yet, so this whole system gridlocks basically all right this is the one which disables the warp timer this auto warping will disappear after this technology completes okay i'm gonna make a save i want to be I want to be on top to see the physical warp reactor spawn in. It's gonna just override this nuclear reactor, which is currently at 1000 degrees. It's gonna replace it with Warp Torio's version of the improved nuclear reactor, or the warp reactor. Which runs on a different type of fuel. Okay, so let's go down here. Right, so with these productivity modules, it looks like production is slow enough, or I am being negligent enough to not have plastics running. <laughs> so we are, basically the, the resource intake is uh, continuing at all times for now, at full speed.
Let's do remember to keep filling the steel as well. Alright, so do I want more efficiency modules? I think I do because eventually I would like to set up like after I have bots I want to basically just make a blueprint for a mine, for the stone mine, for the coal mine and we can bring it in through these uh, warp teleporters. Doing it with bots will be a lot better than building and deconstructing it by hand every time. So I'm gonna want more efficiency models for those miners as well. I guess let's just make another 100. No, we cannot because red chip production has been has been down. We need, basically we need to set up uh, oil cracking. That is what we need to do. I was hoping these barrels could be finished. I should have done it like so. Alright, that should be all the barrels. We get them produced, we can get this out of the way so we can set up oil processing. We can already make some sort of template for that. So we have heavy into light. And we have light into petroleum gas. Somehow we gotta route all of these fluids back and forth. This tank is temporary as well. Yeah, I kinda got myself into a corner here. Okay, so I cannot I cannot take uh, heavy oil as long as this tank is here. This is a kind of an oopsie. Mm. The maximum range is gonna be here. That is gonna connect to here. That will work. Okay, so then we want the pump. I'm gonna pump that in a tank. That is gonna be the heavy fuel tank. A heavy oil tank. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Dutch indeed. Alright, let's keep an eye on the timer. I don't want to miss the moment. Let's just override. Alright, the barrel thing is done. Alright, so this we can set up as close by as here then. Alright, we need to get this thing out of the way. This could be heavy oil. All labs are busy. I think we should go outside. We can get the CD reactor get replaced. Uh, it's gonna look approximately the same, I imagine. Now it's a nuclear reactor. And now it's the warp reactor. It's basically a reskinned nuclear reactor. The warp timer is gone. We can stay as long as we want on the planet. This thing requires warponium fuel, which is the upgraded variant from fuel cells. But we don't have any warponium fuel. Alright, so let's save. Uh, the warp timer disabled. That's a nice achievement. It was kind of where I wanted to get the stream, so I'm glad we're already there. So we're gonna go in editor mode again. And we're just gonna give this thing one of the fuel cells it requires to heat up to the maximum temperature. 
time is not running now so if time is running this is gonna heat up to 1000 degrees as well and we're also gonna set this thing to be not indestructible it, uh, it, shall, it cannot be mined but it can be destroyed by the biters and if we lose it it is gonna explode in the same fiery nuclear blast explosion as the nuclear reactor only if the temperature is above 900 degrees that is that is why we need to heat it up this thing heats up a whole lot faster than the nuclear reactor though all right we are pretty deep into big biters already 60% devolution just like last warp zone but we are not nearly uh, not nearly under such heavy attacks as before also my fps is fine on this world dwarf zone dwarf worlds for the win and finally we can afford to leave behind this water pump over here we no longer need it, we have water on the boiler floor, so let's forget it one last time. And uh, that's gonna be it. Why this thing is heated up. 1000 degrees as well, let's test if it actually does explode. I already know, but... <laughs> let's test it anyway. Oh, it has 5,000 hit points. So let's speed up the game a bit. Ooh. <laughs> well. Approximately the same. <laughs> Takes out the entire base as well. Some walls are still left standing. That's about it. Alright, let's load the last uh, save. Alright, so that is... Uh, it basically functions the same as the nuclear reactor we had put on there. Let's grab back these pipes. We will grab back the pipes. But we are gonna forget about this poor guy. He can stay there. Until the end of time. Or until the biters decide they've had enough of that water pump over there. Alright, water is gone up here. No more water pipes randomly going through my nicely symmetrical base. Was a, uh, a sore to the eye. Alright, we need to set up uh, oil cracking. That is basically what we need to do. <coughs> I guess we're just slowly gonna go for nuclear power. That will. If we can research this before warping out. Uh, it has a chance to spawn in all the chests in the next warp zone already. Because if the chests are already generated by the pollution cloud before... Uh, before, we've, before the tech is researched, they won't have uh, the nuclear reactors added to the loot table just yet. So let's just go for that. If I can click the button. Alright, so this should connect to here. Let's mark this for deconstruction so I can at least place the ghost. It does not really seem to help. Okay, this is going to be heavy oil. We're just going to have to remember that. Um, I think heavy oil automatically connects to here. I'm gonna set a wire condition that the pump only works if we have more than 20,000 heavy oil in the system. We're gonna do the same for light oil if I can decide where the tank is gonna be. Maybe somewhere like so. Well, let's not oversync this too much.
think it would make sense if... Is it gonna be in the way of the water? Yeah, it's gonna be in the way. Probably makes sense to move water up. Like so. And heavy oil like so. We just need to connect that to here. Which means the first one can only be here. Like so. And then we can basically copy paste a couple of those. Not sure, I forgot the ratio, how much we are supposed to have. The ratio is going to be off anyway. I know we need a lot more uh, of the other one. I can flip back to, did I have the flamethrowers flipped still? That is not good, especially not with big biters. Kind of a mess. Seems to be a common team. Oh yeah. One more. How is the platforms doing? Look, the pollution around the platforms is dissipating. You see, we were behind the forest first. Now we put the efficiency modules in. Two pollution a minute instead of ten. And suddenly, pollution is not, is not angering the biters anymore. Even here, you see, pollution was here, angering the biters. Now it's not. The forests are absorbing it. I don't think there's any attacks coming in at the moment. No corpses on the ground. Next to the mining platforms. That's amazing. So as long as this thing can defend itself, we are gonna be good. How about this magazine uh, production at the moment? Consumption. About a hundred a minute, of which ten for military science. So we're still below half a belt of iron. We can afford to stay for economic reasons, still. Let's try to see if we can get to a behemoth biter kill on this world. I don't think so, it's 90%. I think it's gonna... We're gonna be forced to warp out for military reasons long before that. But one could always hope. Alright, these are done. So those are our first... Electric engines, those we can use for making bot frames as soon as we unlock that. Actually, we already have bot frames unlocked, don't we? And we have all the ingredients for it as well, we can make the bots already. Let's make 200 bots. Let's make 100 bots. 100 bots should be enough for my personal armor for basically most of the rest of the playthrough, I guess. Hmm. Alright, so let's do half. And we keep these for... Wait, what? <laughs> we keep these for... Um, other purposes, like the power armor and there's some other stuff we need for. I just forgot what it was at the moment. Oh yeah, the, um, the, exoskel the exoskeletons require 30 of those a pop. Okay, we are getting damaged now. But I think we can still afford to stay a little longer. Let's try to fill up these things. Two batteries and three circuits a pop. It's a good we already made the batteries. And I guess circuits will just insert half stacks. That should do for 100 personal bots. So not, not a preparation for military science just yet. This is just to get our construction bots. I think we're gonna go on the way to power armor then next. Is there anything else I should research before that? I don't think so. I want to get uh, bots so I can easily place and pick up the mines. That's gonna be 
a nice quality of life thing. Probably should set up a concrete maybe for um, not to make the nuclear reactors because we're gonna find those but to make the centrifuges. Those require 100 concrete as well and you cannot find centrifuges in loot chests unfortunately. Lap speed. Yeah, maybe, but as long as science is not backed up because I'm not producing the resources, I don't see the need really yet for lap speed. Anyway, science is gonna go much faster than we can build. Look how long it is ago that we researched advanced oil processing. And I'm still struggling to set it up. It's probably more a me problem, but still. <laughs> Alright, I think we're gonna just... this could be placed here. Something like so. Maybe we should do it like so, so we can actually walk through here. Alright, let's at least get rid of the tank. Kinda was, I kinda built it in the way, not my, that doesn't even work. Like so then, I just want to get rid of this tank here. Now it's a temporary tank on this side, but at least that will be easier to move around. Then we can actually connect the heavy oil tank. Alright, this thing is as good as empty. Come on. I guess we are at 70% evolution almost and I'm just ignoring this uh, <coughs> ammo marker. Alright, so that is heavy oil. I guess it is fine. Let's let's just keep it like so. I'm gonna the heavy cracked oil is going to go directly in here, so it can only get get cracked further to petroleum gas. Not sure if that's ideal. Don't really think so, but yeah, let's do this uh, anyway. Let's not overthink it, like I said. Just before I started overthinking it. There's now way too many power lines everywhere. Right, so can I just continue on with light oil cracking like so? Continue the water. can get like uh, a line of that down the bottom as well perhaps I think I'm building this the wrong way around I can make it way more compact by doing this ah I cannot flip <laughs> Alright, so theoretically if I do it like this, I can put the light ones like so. And just connect the water like so, and have the oil like so. That makes a lot more sense. And I can even pretty easily... I can do this then instead. 
because this uh, it comes in handy that this tank is one tile too far out. It is not one tile too far out if I do it from this direction. Right, then I can do this, this. Man, this is such a limited space. It's so tedious to work with. This could be done. How do we get the stuff back in here though? Perhaps just like so. Perhaps just like so. And then we can continue with these guys. We can even change out later. We can, if we don't have enough of these, we can just move it over a little bit. It will still work if we take into account the output pipes. Yeah, I think it's going to be like this. Probably should take a look outside before everything goes to heck. So like so, this is connected. We just have to get the petroleum gas back through all of this. Can we? I think we can. This is nine tiles, right? Yeah, we can. Uh, this can go. We can do this. Like so, and it is connected to petroleum gas. It is not connected. Ah, wait. There's a underground pipe here as well. Wait. Mm. How about like so? Not cursed at all. I do need to take a look outside how it is going. If we're out of ammo, everything can go really, really quick. Okay, we're not out of ammo. Three and a half K remaining. But we need to bring over iron. How is it going in this area here? 20k copper collected already, 67k iron. And the longer I spent trying to figure out oil cracking <laughs> down there. The more resources we'll uh, store up, I guess. It's not all bad. Okay, I guess. Let's just go bananas. I need to do this way too often. So until we have ammo production down in the basement, let's just maximize those chests. 20,000 iron plates up there to be turned into ammo. Big damage yet, only a little bit on the corners. The corners are the weak points, that's why they're rounded off like that. Okay. I can't wait for all of this stuff to. Ooh, we are here right in time. We're completely out of coal. Look at that, the coal is already there on the belt. Okay, that means we may not be able to stay on this planet for as long as I thought we would. I could just actually, I could just run on oil. 
that would solve the need for is that smart probably it's smarter if i just at least one time fill <laughs> the coal chest because we're actually acutely out of coal here Yeah, let's, uh, let's just let it stream from this belt. But we have oil here, and a lot of it too. Over 2 million. I think I'll do that. Let's just make a... Uh, just like a stopgap measure. Are we only producing... Yeah, basically this gets priority for some reason. Let's try to give plastics priority for a little. Okay, we're gonna just run on normal oil processing until we have this set up because I want to I want to get nuclear power done. We don't have any blue signs. Uh, I want too much too quickly. It's not gonna work like that. Okay, just some temporary setup. We can get rid of this. We can build it over here for now. Oh, maybe we don't even need to. I kind of want to keep that free, that area. Maybe I can just do it here. So basic oil processing. Actually, that is wasteful. We have water here. Actually, I should put the other pumps down as well. I don't know what I'm doing. I just deleted a full tank of oil for no reason. Alright, let's do it up here. It's only temporary anyway. Advanced oil. We're just gonna turn everything into solid fuel basically. This looks complicated, but it is uh, actually quite easy to set up. Hopefully I can get it done before we run out of power. Solid fuel from heavy oil takes 20 per two second, 10 per second. Yeah, that's plenty. Um, Solid fuel from petroleum. I know it's more efficient to crack uh, heavy oil into light oil, but I don't want to spend time setting it up. I just want to make solid fuel from petroleum gas. Come on. Yeah. I guess we may be needing... Two for light oil. Ten light oil. Mm, yeah, probably, uh, probably approximately like so.
And that's basically well self balance. So once call is out, it's just gonna side load it on here. And hopefully that will hopefully this will be enough to keep the base running. Okay, one sec is for me for my car. We could do it actually like this for, until we have nuclear power and then we can stop worrying about transferring coal up and down the base every time. Okay, this is empty yet again, that is good. The pressure starts mounting up, we are at 77% evolution. Only 13% more to go to behemoth biters. Can we get the first kill on this planet? I don't know. We do have the damage, we, we will get it done. We missed a pipe from the refinery for light oil out. Uh, all resources are present on dwarf planets, but it's, yeah, it's pretty hard to find any resource basically. Missed the pipe on the refinery. Oh, this one. Yeah, that kinda is important, I guess. Alright, so I'm not gonna stash up tons of fuel. It's just gonna be live production. This is gonna work well, I think, if it's enough. Alright, let's uh, let's get this <laughs> advanced oil processing done. It should not be so hard. Just wanted to look too nice. That is the that is the entirety of the problem, really. Okay, this is going to be petroleum gas. I have no. I I forgot the ratio, but it was probably something. Not too far of uh, of this order of magnitude. So just hook up this all the way around. And then we run out of pipes, naturally. But we have plenty of other pipes to place. Okay, we can start placing. I think the design is kinda finalized, like so. Then this water needs to go down here actually, which is a bit awkward. But that is water. Okay, this is the different oil type, so we need not to place that one. Here is going to be the gap. Going to need to pump out. Gonna need to pump out light oil as well. Hook it up to here. Man, this is the this is. <laughs> and then we can connect it to this one. It works. Yes, that is that's it. Okay, I think the whole thing is complete now. Nothing can go wrong anymore. Yeah, I think that's it. We done. We did it. I think we did it. Holy moly, what a setup is this. Okay, we're not doing... Not doing the last pipe to make things look nice. <laughs> what a pattern. Alright, we can just underground it. All 
All right, then we... Ah, this is already... The pump is already here, so we don't need another pump. Just like so. Right? And as soon as we power this pump... It should be in business. Right? Nice. <laughs> <sighs> Time for that apple pie, which I forgot about. Hmm. Well deserved. Let's switch for advanced oil. The efficient one. Now we can do it. Now let's see if the fluids flow where they should. Okay. We don't have a lot of heavy oil collected just yet, so this is not active. Only 2k in the system, we need 20k before it starts pumping. I will flip this around just to see if it actually works, like it should. It goes here, it goes here. And it joins this tank. This is then pumped out if there's more than 20k in here, which there is. It is going down, which is an indication that we probably have enough of these crackers to out, out crack the production. <laughs> All of these are working. This pipe is empty, which indicates petroleum gas is being pumped out as well. So I guess everything is working. We change this back to preserve the oil for lubricant. Which currently is full, but still. Okay, we did it. Advanced oil. That is worth a save point. Advanced oil. No, I, I won't connect it to poles, this one at least, because it's gonna be 20k all the time basically. Because once it's 20k, it's only going to be pumped out if it's above 20k. So once it reaches 20k once, it will just stay there for forever. Unless we don't have enough cracking capacity. Right, all assemblers are moving, so we are in full production of blue signs. 24 megawatts of power, that is not nothing. Let's check in the basement if oil production is actually keeping up. Looks like the smelters were out. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we are producing enough to keep up with all of that stuff. I think I'm just gonna switch back to efficiency modules until until we have nuclear power. I think uh, again, a matter of too soon. Basically, I'm churning through my coal way too fast. I had 80k coal at the begin of this thing, and it's all gone. It is not even enough. I wonder how long these have been out. I guess... I guess it just takes some time to back up. These were never active down here. Ah no, it is just shadow on there. I thought it was uh, disconnected, but it's not. Alright, so no coal in the basement. That's actually good, because after nuclear power I want to disconnect it anyway. 
This would have been a great planet to go search for that nuclear power, by the way. The dwarf planet. Unfortunately... Unfortunately, we didn't quite get there. Our uh, the dwarf planet came one warp zone too early. Okay, we... We are wasting uh, way more iron on ammo than that we are gathering. So 225 magazines a minute is break even. A full belt of iron can make 225 magazines. So about that one and a half iron, one and a half belt of iron production in ammo consumption right now, which is bad. That means we probably should warp out. I'm gonna make a save then. Shoot warp here. I think this is where I'm going to continue in the next stream. For this stream though, I'm not going to quit just yet. I want to see if we can make it until Behemoth Biters. Let's see if we can keep the base standing until it is time for Behemoth Biters. That means I should not be doing any base building stuff anymore. And this technology being almost complete should be a good reminder to myself that what I should be doing next warp zone is hunting down a nuclear power plant. Okay, so the rest of the stream we're just uh, I'm just gonna talk a bit to you and we're gonna just watch the watch whatever is going on here. Will I die if I stand in here? Uh you have to B or something. Uh, temp. Ooh, ooh, yeah, that hurts a lot. That hurts a lot. <laughs> okay, didn't die. Still zero deaths. Well, not really. I already blew myself up numerous times with the reactor. But uh, now we're on the dwarf planet, it is finally our time to test test our setup against the more evolved like a like a special more evolved uh, biter force. A little smaller uh, in quantity but uh, higher in quality so to say. I think yeah this corner is under the heaviest of attacks. What, am I ju just gonna walk around repairing all the time now? I don't know, maybe. We get a uranium fuel cell back as a spent product of our warponium fuel cells. So that's interesting. We cannot run on normal nuclear fuel. Okay, 83% evolution. We are getting there. Let's uh, reveal the full magnitude of the pollution cloud. Ho ho! Quite a dense blob. Actually not too many biter bases in there. Which is why we don't have that many attacks going on. But yeah look, this is the actual pollution cloud around the miners. They are mining, right? Yeah, they are mining. No bite attacks at all on those. Very good. Alright, I'll do one more repair round and I'll re-chat a little bit because Warptori is a mod where you don't really have a lot of time to do other stuff except do Warptori stuff. No, I still have my apple pie, I still have some bites. It's more of sort of an apple cake, so not this red apple pie, but more apple cake with apples, I guess. Blocking yourself in is uh, the curse of Warp Torio. 
especially around the oil stuff with the pipes and such. No, no, no cream. Got to keep my hands relatively clean for operating the mouse and stuff. Oh yeah, not that many biters here. I think we're still on 60 FPS actually. Ah no, not quite. But I may just speed it up a little bit with the... I guess speeding up the game won't really work. Actually, we, we are at double speed. How fast can we go? Four times speed, almost. 220 instead of 240 UPS. Alright. Repair. Alright, since I'm cheating anyway, let's just plop in a RoboPort. I just want to have a good view of the screen without uh, zooming and repairing every time. Uh, let's do a bunch of construction bots because they're gonna die. Don't even have space for it. Well, especially because we have super slow bots, they're gonna die very fast. But hopefully we won't run out of ammo. We will run out of ammo, we have 8 ammo remaining. I think we just cannot... We have bunches of iron, we are just not uh, consuming ammo fast enough. Alright. I just want to see if it's possible to get there if the base does not get destroyed. Before I end the stream, let's do an infinity chest. With ammo. Uh, that is not working. And then we'll just use one of these loaders. Yeah, they pop in there, alright. Now we have an infinite supply of ammo from this chest. I did have a Factorio server with subscribers like two years ago when I was still way smaller. I would not mind to have one up again. I'm just uh, not at all familiar with uh, how to set it all up and stuff. I've, ever have, I've had help with it every time. Okay, much I'll, um, I'll I'll, con I'll contact you through Discord uh, about uh, maybe we can get a server set up again where like for Patreons and stuff where Patreons can play.
<laughs> like now. <laughs> I think we, I think this base is actually. Look at those cute little bots. Slowest bots ever. Well, he got it repaired. I think we're gonna get to behemoths. He won't die. Could start any map. Any map you'd want. Yeah, maybe we could have a pole. Maybe a modded play. I think Vanilla Factorio with hundreds of players would. We already did that. It just dies off after a point because there's not much to do. But perhaps like an extensive mod like Space Exploration could be maybe a, a nice multiplayer project as you also have different planets to, to manage and stuff. I will get that. I'll get that uh, in a poll up on Patreon, what we should set up for, what kind of a map. I think I cannot make it like free um, like free to enter for everybody who finds it, because it's just going to run out of player space. I don't know the technical details though. We'll see. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll, contact, uh, I'll contact you after... Um, a few hours after the stream, I'll try to get on Discord. If, if you're able to. If you're not able to, it's fine too. I'll just start sending you messages and you can reply whenever. Alright, so far I want to say thank you for everybody for uh, for uh, watching the stream and uh, for making it a nice place around here. Nice in the chat. Despite me not really setting up a lot of uh, spam blockers and uh, we don't, we don't get a lot of spam around here, and also everybody is nice to each other. Has been all the time. I don't think we've had one annoying, like one person out of line, I should say, uh, just yet. Like no fights or nothing. So yeah, really nice environment. Not sure I expected that it to be like this on Twitch before I started uh, streaming here. I've heard a lot of bad things about uh, poisonous blah blah and uh, but I guess you know this is Factorio right this is not some I mean you guys are pretty specific audience so I should not really be surprised I think it's more about <laughs> this being Factorio and you being a specific type of people who like Factorio which has more to do with the fact that people are getting along here and uh, no, we just have a friendly talk going on all the time. I'm happy to fight someone if you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Insulting yourself doesn't count, Adam. <laughs> Alright, we are getting there. I think I'm gonna speed it up a bit. It's almost dinner time. As well, I guess. <laughs> Looks kind of funny like this. Yeah, but basically, it takes forever to get the behemoths. The, the way evolution progress is calculated, it is like a reverse quadratic uh, relation. So, it means if you are at 90% evolution, where behemoth start, evolution is progressing already 100 times slower than at the start of the game. So, let's say at the start of the game, you have to, let's say, 100 pollution points to get 1% evolution. Now you need to get 10,000 pollution points to get 1% evolution. And after it's 99%, it's going to be like 10,000 times slower than uh, in the beginning. I think that's how it approximately works. I may be off by orders of magnitude here. 
Okay, we're running at three to four times speed, and we're just not we're just not getting there. The only reason we're getting there at all is the warp platform's pollution also exponentially. I think exponentially increases over time, so that kind of offsets the reverse. But you have to like, slow down these stuff. Look at this blob of biters here, man. Banana to apple. The what is the banana to apple discussion? Please enlighten me. And also on which side you are on. <laughs> yeah, we are old. <laughs> we don't have the energy anymore to fight each other. We are just like... Rah, rah. Let them, let them. I disagree, but I'm too lazy to disagree actively. <laughs> Bananas are gods. I haven't, uh, I'm not really up to date on, on the meme factor in there, or how that has been, uh, how that has originated or so, something. Apples, apples against bananas. What are we gonna get there? It's, it's slowing down. Faster and faster. We're already almost uh, two hours on this planet. One hour forty-five almost. I think it's good. I have the uh, one wall has gotten blown up. Or what? Wait, what? This wall has been missing all the time. There always has been a hole in the wall. If this was Age of Empires, I'd be dead already. All this time there was a hole in the wall. It was just a ghost. It is, you cannot, you basically don't see it. You cannot, it's practically invisible. But this was not a real wall. It was not destroyed. There was no marker that it was destroyed. It just was a ghost placement all this time. Okay, the first bot is down. Not too bad. Look at this pollution cloud. <laughs> Massive amounts of pollution. Alright, we're almost there. 89.5%. Come on already. Look, these guys are absorbing. They, they just cannot get it all absorbed. Oh. Alright, then, then we know for next time. It takes. Actually, it's pretty fast if you consider this overall. One hour and 50 minutes on the planet to reach behemoth biters from, from the star. That is why evolution resets upon every warp zone. Imagine after one hour and 50 minutes of playtime reaching behemoth biters. It's, there's no chance. No chance. Un unless, of course. No, let's not get into that. <laughs> I I'm not gonna nerd snipe myself into additional playthroughs and challenges with Warptorio. After this map is complete and the YouTube map is complete, it is time to move along to something new. Alright. Behemoth Biters exist now. It should take a little bit longer before we get the first one. After that, we are gonna end the stream. If you would like to see me try out a new mod pack, I have started streaming Science Galore uh, three days ago or so. The VODs are on Twitch, not on YouTube, yes, just yet. But on Twitch you can watch back the entire thing. I've gotten Twitch Turbo in the meantime, so all Warptorio and Science Galore VODs should be preserved for the full... Hey, we did it! 
I missed the moment. <laughs> for the full, uh, uh, for a full 60 days after the stream. So I have I haven't even been streaming two months just yet. So that's quite a while. Much better than the seven or 14 days which they were available before. Twitch. This channel, lol. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if you hover over a nest. You can here see the spawn chances. 4% chance for Behemoth Biter. I guess evolution rounds up to 1.00 after you surpass 99.5, perhaps. But the true evolution factor will never actually reach uh, 100%. It's like uh, one of those graphs which uh, approaches a value. I don't know how it's called in English. In Dutch we call it an asymptote. Asymptote. Uh, it approaches a value but never gets there, you know. Like 1 divided by x, it uh, goes towards 0 as x goes to infinity, but it never actually reaches 0. This never actually reaches 1. Alright, here's Behemoth Spitter. Whoa, that takes a lot of... You now I actually want to see some Behemoth Biter action. We actually killed one, so that is good. We already killed nine of them, actually. Alright, so this base can deal with an occasional Behemoth Biter. Why is it night again? Yeah, probably will go in editor mode, then it's day. Oh, this is a spitter. Let's check out the spitter. Alright, not the best, not the best cinematic effect. Here is a behemoth biter. Look at this guy. He's got 3000 hit points, 12 physical armor. That's like almost... Eight times, like eight or nine times the hit points of this guy, plus more armor as well. Oh, and he just despawned. Well, all right. <laughs> yes. Uh, that took a while. There was one. Oh, the fav my favorite track begins in the background. It's a great, this is a great track for <laughs> when biters start to demolish stuff.
Right. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're spending like 1000 ammo a minute now. Okay. Let's place back the destroyed gun turrets. Ah, they are actually getting destroyed fairly, alright. I guess I'm just uh, gonna leave you at this side again. Base getting destroyed by Behemoth Biters. With a full blue belt of ammo. 21 damage against 12 armor and another 10%. So those guys are quite beefy. It's, it takes too long to kill them basically. They also don't care too much about the fire. Look at these guys here. See, the, the, they actually just run through the fire with, without barely any damage. Right. So everybody, thanks for watching and uh, thanks for the subscri subscriptions and stuff and for the cheers, especially when I just missed something again and uh, you need to do the, the 10 bits thing to get the message lit up or something. Which uh, seems to happen way too often. <laughs> and I will see you most likely next week on Sunday and my Science Glow streams are gonna be unplanned whenever I feel like streaming. At mostly probably in the evenings in European time is the highest chance I will have some some time to do it. In the day I'm usually working on YouTube and stuff. But yeah, thanks for watching everybody, thanks for chatting. And I will see you next time.
All right, and let's not pretend I'm not here. Let's let's do the raid thing. I think I'm just gonna drop you off at the uh, anti elites with the speed running stream. It's like look like he's doing improvements of the 100% record. Everybody hail the banana gods. I'm on team banana. I decided. Well, at least he is streaming right now. Nephrims is not so. <laughs> let's uh, follow the religion that is there for you. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, I'm already raiding anti-elite. Wait, what? Okay, I, I, I just don't understand all the stuff, man. I'm, all, I'm already raiding. I thought I was just prepared. Okay, let's see. I'm, uh, I'm gonna end my own stream soon then. Ah, the raid only starts. No, wait, the raid not starts when I end the stream, right? Oh, wait, looks like the raid has started. We are raiding an empty, very good gaming chair, apparently. <laughs> Looks like he's on break. Oops. 